I think that did it. Golly, I I freaking hate this StreamYard connection crap, man. I'm going to say this for anybody that ain't done StreamYard yet and trying to get into StreamYard. Get get your stuff together first before you hit record or, or, or make sure your stuff is set up before you hit uh, uh, schedule it. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Lair Farmer 73 here. Uh, I just put out a video of setting up the gazelle. Let me set this up. Setting up the gazelle base camp. Hi, Trina's journey. And I just wanted to talk about it. Let me wipe this off. I can't believe that's starting to look like crap. That might look a little better. There we go. Okay. So, uh, hey, Unique. Hey, uh, Belinda. Hey, DP. Hey, CC Productions 3000. Hey, Teresa. How y'all doing? I hope my I hope my stream is going good because I'm outside and we got a whole bunch of technical stuff going on on the inside. So, hey, she said. I just put out a video about an hour ago. I did this on purpose because I wanted y'all to see the actual setup. And then I want to talk about it. Now, I understand something. Hey, Lola Bunny. Hey, Lady Divine. Hey, Flew Away. Hey, Linda Hutchison. Uh, hey, Miss Native Cherokee. The reason I did it like this is because I like doing, I like showing you a product or like showing you a situation and then talk about it. Because me talking about it does you no good, okay? It does. It doesn't help you at all. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and close off this bug net. The reason I wanted to do the stream yard, and I'm gonna put my link here, uh, just in case anybody wanted to come up. Okay, and. Mind you, if you want to come up, you got to show your face, okay? And I understand a lot of people don't want to do that, but right now, that's the whole premise of StreamYard, okay? Other than that, we could talk on the phone or we could just stay in a chat. So if you want to come up, I just put my link in here and we can talk about it, but you got to show your face, okay? Number one, I set this up and I did this for several reasons i didn't do this just for fun i did this to show you there are other alternatives for people with disabilities this this setup gazelle and other uh what's the other but i got the bush nail the first one y'all saw me with the bush nail quick tent gazelle quick tent the pop-up tents super 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 quick easy painless setup for people with um disabilities and the reason i'm doing the whole gazelle setup i'm gonna leave this out here all week because i got a lot of stuff to show y'all is because some people are contacting me with disabilities i have one today in the comment section about a wheelchair and all of that is important because just because you have a disability does not mean you do not want to prepare yourself for a rough time that also does not mean that um you can't go camping and just enjoy yourself too. So now for the young lady that contacted me that's in a wheelchair earlier, I'm in the screen house right now because I wanted to show you something. You said you you, you like the gazelle pop-up tents, but you didn't like the D door because you got to get your wheelchair through. Okay, the reason I'm starting out in the screen house is because this is more than a screen house, okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it unzips and zips just like so you can get your wheelchair in okay <clears throat> get yourself in and out easily but this is the sweet part this this screen house also comes with the panels and i'm gonna show you here just like i showed you in the video i i chopped that video down so it didn't be too long but i put the panels up which literally makes this a whole enclosed tent all right so i don't have the other three panels on because i just ordered them they should be here like like now right so i'm waiting on those now but when i get those other three panels and i put them over this 
this will become a whole enclosed tent. So what that'll do is you're in your wheelchair. You can have your situation set up where you don't even have to worry about um, all the weird little doors for the tents and the straight zip ups and the D doors. You will still have your T upside down T accessible with your wheelchair. And you can either have this as your screen house by rolling up the screens like I showed you earlier in the video. You can roll those screens up or you can leave it wide open, you know, to eat in and do your thing. How you doing, uh, Big Way? How you doing, uh, Cynthia Color, Trina's Journey, uh, Missy Hawk? Let's see. <clears throat> hey, Fred, how you doing? Juliet Francis Bishop, how you doing? Dave Busby in the house, how you doing? Learning to grow my own, what's going on, brother? <clears throat> Good to see you. Hey, uh, Talia, how you doing? Perry B. So, I set all this stuff up this way because it's, I set up, now let me back up. I edited that video like crazy. The reason I did not because it took me a long time to set it up. I edited the crap out of that video because I kept going in house. I kept doing business calls. <clears throat> I turned the big T8 gazelle tent around about four different times trying to see exactly where I wanted it and ended up exactly where I had it in the first place. You didn't need to see all of that. And one time I even went in the house and I stayed in the house for like an hour. You didn't need to see that. So that's why it was so many edits. You didn't need to see me pull the tarp over the top of the thing because that's super easy. OK, and I will pull it halfway, get a call, go in the house. That's why I kept chopping that up. So I wanted um, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew exactly what was going on. But I I can set this whole camp up, which I'm going to show you. Another reason I wanted to go on StreamYard, I can set this entire camp up in less than 15, 20 minutes. I'm talking about all three setups, fully set up the way they are. I can set it up in less than 15 or 20 minutes tops because you're just pulling stuff. You're just pulling it, popping it out, and it sets up by itself. The only thing that takes the most time is just putting the stakes in the ground, and that's if you even want to put the stakes in the ground. You should. But trust me, I've had this gazelle tin up four times and I've only put the stakes in it. This is the second time I've ever put stakes up in it. So it doesn't blow away. How you doing, Carla? Hey, uh, uh, by you. How you doing, Miss Virtual Girl? Hey, MTG uh, Crime Podcast. What's going on? So. If I had any questions whatsoever, I take them before I get into what I really wanted to come out here and talk about. Uh, hey, Elisa, good to see you. I ain't seen you in forever. I ain't seen you in forever. Now, I'm going to get right into it. And if I see a question, I'll stop. But here was the thing. It's a reason why I keep going in hard with the tents. Uh, how do you compare yours to others? How do you compare to your others oh how do i compare these to my other ones there is no comparison when i say there is no comparison these are for something completely different this is top quality but for for something completely different this is for more of a breezy summery you know light easy to go easy to carry easy to set up you just want to stay in a camp for maybe two days Quick setup. That means when it's time to leave camp, quick takedown. So that quick base camp is like you getting together for family. Y'all having a little fun. But my canvas tents are mainly for like the Kodiak and the White Duck and the Vivor. Those are mainly for like, hey, we're going to be here for a week or so. So set this all the way up. And this is home for the week. If you get what I'm saying, the canvas tents, and it also depends on what you're doing. But for the most part, when you setting up a canvas tent, it's going to take longer. It's more to set up 
and it's pretty much it's, it's a little more difficult to set up and it's a little bit more difficult to take down and those are set up those the purpose for those are we're gonna be here for a while okay these are not necessarily we're gonna be here for a while this is like weekend warrior type of situation so they is is really no comparison it's just apples and oranges okay when is the next bug out? I got it down in the description box below and in the first pinned comment. The next winter survival camp bug out is Fe February 2nd through the 5th at Myrtle Beach State Park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Everybody, we got a lot of people coming already signed up, so I don't want to run out of spaces. If you guys are still interested in coming to our winter survival slumber party, slash tour of the tents slash show me your tents please register at easily grown garden it's in the description box below if you don't get it easily grown slash products and if you have any questions you can contact my wife at lady 73 at yahoo.com okay that was a good question matter of fact and i'll put that up for a minute you got are uh, you got it, big boy? Got you, man. Um, okay. Now, this is actually this is actually uh a fairly good statement. That's why I brought it up. It said, wonder how many times your neighbors look out the window and be like, What the heck is he doing out there now? Okay, that is actually gonna be my next video, which I want it to be tonight. Me and my daughter had a deep conversation. It might even be tonight, late tonight. Because me and my daughter had a deep conversation. Me and my daughter were together all day yesterday um, on Freedom Acres. We had a conversation that I, I really wanted her to be here for y'all to talk about. But she is so busy. She probably be, won't be able to engage with us. Because I really wanted y'all to get her point of view for it. But we're going to talk about that right now, about the neighbors looking out the windows. OK, that's a serious situation. Uh, Leonard said, I think I met you several years ago. I was in an area. I was an area maintenance technician. Um, what did uh, area maintenance technician? What did you do? What did you service for me or you thought you service for me? Um, let me see. Okay. Say, so, hey, Led, I heard conflicting information. Should I set up and wet down the Kodiak tent before I use it next month? Yes. Yes. You. That's called seasoning your tent. All you do is take your water hose and just wet it down all over. And what that does is it makes the, the cotton fiber swell and then they lock back in like this and you never really have to do that again as long as you own it. OK, so absolutely you should. Now, this is what I do. Instead of me seasoning my tent like that with the water hose, I let Mother Nature do it. So I, if you notice, I always set my tent up and then it end up raining and I do a video while it's raining because that light rain does the seasoning for me. And then it swells them up, locks them in and I don't have to waste no house water. But, yes, you should season your tent. Um, you were my USPS service technician, service technician. Oh, 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 I'm, okay. If Leonard, if you, if you were my service technician and you had to come out, you probably helped me out several times because I got videos of me just waiting in my truck, waiting on you and the rest of the gang many a day. So probably bro probably what part of the city did you service uh hey phoenix says uh hello led love what you do man your energy is contagious keep being you much love from florida thank you for that i appreciate you uh i really do hey erica my fly family i see you in here this is another one for you you might want to look into this one 
Okay, Big Voice says, uh, would you still put a tarp over camp for rain? <clears throat> you know, it depends on how bad it's raining. I mean, if it's pouring and with no signs of stopping for days, I don't care how good of a tent you have, it may leak. Now, here's the, here's the deal with your tent just leaking a little bit. You're in there sleeping, you're in there eating, you're in there functioning. Just a little bit of water dropping on your head or on your sock will ruin everything. So if you have to put a tarp over your setup, no matter what, I say do it. If you don't, don't. But I, I have never done, well, I've done it once, but I don't leave them up like that. If you have to, I say do it. If you don't, you know, that's completely up to you. But a little bit of water on your sock, a little bit of water on your clothes when it's cold, a little bit of moisture on you will ruin your freaking day. So do I say do whatever you have to do to make you feel better. Okay. Erica, my fly family said, you know, I'm looking at, into it. I told Billy it's a good birthday gift. Hey, happy birthday. Tell him that happy birthday already. This is that one. This is that one. Okay. If you're going to get here's, I'm going to go out here and show you all an example before it gets too dark. Cause I don't want to be on here too long. Before. If you're going to get the T4. Ask yourself why. If you ask me, go ahead and spend the extra, I think it's 200 bucks, and get the T8. Me, personally, I'm going to show y'all why. I would get the T8 versus the T4 Plus, which is, which is the T4 with a screen house built on it. I don't like that one because it's like this. It doesn't have a floor like this. It has grass right so that that's not all together that's that puts you off a little bit okay this grass stuff because it's stuff all in this grass the spiders it might be garter snakes and everything else to kind of kind of tarnish your your good time a little bit okay i'm just saying if you gangster like that ain't no problem okay here we go right here. Trina's journey. Hey, sister, say, why did you opt for the tarp over the gazelle footprint? Because the gazelle footprint cost a billion dollars. This tarp cost 30 bucks. It's, it's no different. It's just a, all gazelle, all gazelle has. That's just their tarp. That's just their brand of tarp. That's it. Oh, and it's perfectly shaped just like the little tent. But it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this 30, this tent is t 10 by 20. It's $30. 30. And I can't remember what the gazelle footprint was, but I know it's significantly higher than that. And that's why it sent me like, oh, hell no. Listen, I like gazelle, but I like a lot of different products, but it's certain things with different name brand products where I'm like, hell no, that's that's ridiculous. OK, I'm a realist and I'm not going to call out no brand names right now, but you see some of the brands that I really rock with. Sometimes they even have a product where I'm like, I look at the price like, come on now, come on. That's bullshit, you know, so just because it's Gazelle, I didn't necessarily want their tarp just because it's shaped perfectly like their tent i'm gonna tell you another reason why you get 10 more feet out of this tarp right 10 by 20 you get 10 more feet so you can set something else up on that whole other side of that tarp where that footprint is just the shape of the the tent itself Yolanda Ballard said, Led, you are doing a great job. Thank you for teaching us. I hope, I hope to meet you. You will. I hope you, I hope to see you at survival camps. It's a slumber party. Uh, 
Okay, Trina Journey said my T4 Plus have a floor. Oh, it does? Everybody else's doesn't. I'm, I'm going to have to talk to you, Trina, because everybody else's don't have a floor. Hmm. Maybe that's an upgrade or, or a newer version of it. But that's the real reason I got the, the, T, the T8. Wait a minute. Let me read this again. My T4 Plus has a floor. I'm talking about, okay, Trina, your T4 Plus has a floor in the main room and in the screen house. Because what I'm saying is the T4s do have a floor, but in that screen house, they don't. What well, they didn't used to enlighten me. Oh, oh, Trina said, gotcha. I purchased the footprint. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like that. That was just a little too pricey for me. Uh, what's up, Black Guns and Guards? What's going on, brother? Uh, here we go. Here we go. It's good to see. You. Um, uh, big voice, a four by six by twenty five tarp. Just saying. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Say so yes in both areas. Wow, I, I didn't know. I had no idea. Well, you do, you do got, a, you do got a hell of a, uh, a deal. Then, if your T four plus has both floors in both, I say yeah. You can't lose then. Okay, so I'm gonna take y'all into. Well, I really ain't got to take you into the T eight or the T four, not necessarily. But I'm, you know, it's totally up to y'all if y'all want me to. Go ahead and show y'all around the T8 and the T4. How you doing, Missy Hawk? Say, I, I have literally been looking at tents for the last hour. Reading reviews has me confused. I'm glad you're doing this live. That's why I'm doing it. Because camp, even though it's in February, yeah, look, it's been a beautiful day. The weather is perfect. You know that when the weather is just perfect, it either means it's about to get hot or it's about to get cold. So we're going down into winter. It's about to get cold. So I know before you know it, it's going to be winter time. It's going to be February and we're going to be looking at each other in the face. So I said, I'm not going to half-ass this one. I'm going to make sure everybody knows about it. Again, I'm going to repeat it. Survival Slumber Party will be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at Myrtle Beach State Park, just yards away from the ocean, away from the beach. And it will be February 2nd through February 5th. If you need to sign up, please go to easily grown gardens at yahoo.com. I mean, easily grown gardens.com slash products. It's in the description box below, and I have it in the first pinned comment. So if you need any of that information, you can go to the description box, okay? All of the all of the information and all of the tents and the setup that I have here today is in that description box as well. You can also donate and contribute to all the gifts. You read the description box where we have donations coming in for all of the the gift, the gifts and the giveaways that we're going to be doing during camp. And I also want to say thank you. Thank you for all of the people that have donated so far to our camping group. Thank you to all the people that's donating. I'm getting the PayPal's and I'm getting the cash apps and it's all going into the business account for the camping trip giveaway. So I want to say thank you for that. Thank you to all of the people that's donating to uh, the Survival Slumber Party 2024. It's funny to say that. Thank you for that. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Here we go. Oh, and Missy Hawk. This is that one, okay? This is if you're looking for real information on some good tents, let me know. Cause I got a I got a million of them. I mean that. I got a bunch of tents. I know ones to stay away from. I know ones that you need just in case. All of them got a purpose. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, Davis, have you used and or keep seam sealer on hand just to be prepared yes i do if so what was your experience i always seal and seal my tents before i even leave for camp 
the sealant works. And here's another thing about the sealant. It also depends on what kind of tent you're dealing with. Now, if you just got like, you know, a Dollar General tent that you, you picked up at Walk, I mean, at the Goodwill or something, believe that tent is probably super old and it's probably been in the sun and left out in the sun and the weather for a long time. And that sealant is, is, it's a sealant. It's, um, let me stop. The sealant works, but you got to see what tent you're putting on. For everybody that was at Survival Slumber Party a few weeks ago, I finally got one of these and I'm about to test it out right now. The Thermo Seal, everybody. Everybody had one of these but me. And I kept saying, what the hell is that thing? Everybody kept saying, oh, Larry, this is the Thermo Seal. Um, uh, Mm, my cart runneth over. She had one. I'm like, what is this? Everybody was, what? You don't know about the thermoseal, Mr. Camp King? <laughs> you don't know? I said, tell me something. But all I know is me and Lady Led was swatting. I just put the, put the pad in. Me and Lady Led was swatting and everybody else was kicked back. And I'm like, what the heck? So this will be my first time cutting it on. I literally got several of these thanks to everybody at survival camp and this is what survival camp is about survival camp is to come out here practice with your preps practice all your gear have a good time and learn from other people i'm not the best i'm not the king of this i'm picking up information from everybody's campsite and i'm gonna show y'all a couple that i picked up uh i think i got them out here i picked up this one I picked up this one. That's the ones for the hunters. That's the one I know I'm going to need. Um, I got a whole basket of stuff. Get in the basket. Wait a minute. Um, let me see. I got another one. Oh, I left them in the house. I'll go get them in a minute. But I left them in the house. Those are the canister ones. I got those. I went on. So with this, it says, cut it on. And now I'm just supposed to just strike a pose on this thing. I hear the gas. I don't know if it's starting yet. How do you know if this thing is lit, y'all? Oh, I hear it. I heard it. I hear it. I heard it strike. Now, I opted for this one. Let me go down. I opted for this one. This was $20. The newer one has a window. Oh. This one does too. That's the window show you is lit. So now I just set this here and these mosquitoes that I keep popping, I ain't got to worry about them. So I'm going to set this on the table and I'm going to actually do an experiment and see if these mosquitoes stay away from me. They're supposed to stay away from me for 15 feet. All right. I'm, I'm going to go back up and I'm going to get some questions. Okay. I'm going to try to use the, hey, T-Nog, how you doing, New Orleans Gardener? I see you in here. Sneaking in all uh, the side side door, coming into Dan's hall. Okay, I'm trying to find more questions. Hey, TLC in the garden, what's going on, my sister? Uh, let me see. A tent that you can fit on a, a scooter, you can go with what I have. I can only speak on what I have. I have a small one-man tent. Uh, I believe it's an Ozark Trail. I can't remember if I got it from there or uh, REI. I got one-man tents to go in my bug-out bag. That's all I can, you know, that'll fit on your scooter or in your bug-out bag. So better yet, it'll be better for you just to get a tarp and structure your own tent if you're if you're rolling like that get you a couple tarps just fold it up and when you get to your destination have you some um paracord some tarps some sticks and set you up a tent okay because i hate them one man tents it don't matter how big or little you is them suck hey analytic gardener okay we got, I think we got all the questions. So I'm going to go all the way back down to the bottom.
I hope everybody's getting all this information that everybody is putting in here. Uh, oh, where was that? Okay. okay, here we go. Good one. Hey, uh, my cart runneth over is in here. What's going on, sister? I got to show you something. You see, I got the greenhouse. My cart runneth over is a new camper, new to the greenhouse lounge. And she came and showed off and showed out at the survival slumber party. And I kid you not, this is the tent, the screen house that she had, the six-sided screen house that been in my Amazon cart for over a year. And as soon as I seen hers, as soon as I got home, I was like, purchase. So, yeah, it's all that. Okay. Hey, Led, I'm looking for a four-season tent. What will be your preferred? It depends on your 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 level, your skill level. I mean, you're looking for a four season tent. I got two in the top of my head right out the bat. I got several four season tents, canvas. The white duck um Avalon 20 foot bell tent is just it's off the chain. Okay, you're gonna pay for it, but doggone it, it's it's easy to set up and it's off the chain. Now, after that, you got the Kodiak cabin tent, 12 by 12, hard to set up. It's a pain in the back to set that thing up. It takes a lot longer to set it up. But once you got it set up, it's my favorite. I'm going to say that. Once you got the Kodiak cabin tent set up, it is my absolute favorite four season tent. So that's the only suggestion i can give from what my experience has been i have several vivor tents i have a white duck and i have a kodiak so ooh, this is really working y'all see i ain't smacking no more okay okay i'm gonna show y'all something else too let me keep going in the old days we would just make a lean to a lean to but now tents are very nice very true let me keep going here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. What's a good tent that would fit on a motorcycle? Okay, I just answered that one. Hey, my car runneth over. There she is. What's going on, sister? What's going on? You and I'm loving all the, the camp, the camp videos with all the gear. Everybody needs to see that. Everybody needs to go over to her channel and check out. This thing is really working. All the bugs are stuck at the top of the tent now. Okay. Okay. At first, I thought I was wasting my money. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Led, what's the weight of those tents all packed up and so forth? Which tents? Are you talking about the canvas tents or are you talking about these tents? The gazelle tent weighs weighs about when it's all packed up. The gazelle T8 weighs about 40, 50 pounds, about 50 pounds. This screen tent, it just don't weigh nothing. I want to say this weighs about 30 pounds. And the T4 weighs about, about 40 pounds. The T8 is about 50, 60 pounds. So, yeah. Now, the canvas tents, back to that question, the canvas tents, my Kodiak weigh about 150 pounds. That's just the tent. And then you got the screen house. That's another good 175, 100 pounds. And the white duck weighs about 130 to 150 pounds. The Vivor, about the same-ish, you know, is... Those canvas tents weigh a lot. That's because they are four season tents and they are thick, thick canvas, cotton uh, canvas. Okay, let's see. Last chance to dance at love, simplicity, ease of setup of the gazelle. Do gazelle tents have a stove jack? No, they do not. They are not really meant for four season um, winter camping. If not, how how low is the temp rating for the gazelle? I don't know what the see i don't know what the the temperature because they really kind of don't really have a temperature trust me and believe me on that 
because if it's super cold outside, it's super cold inside. The only thing going to keep you warm is something more like a buddy heater like I used before. Use a buddy heater, but you also need a CO2 device, a CO2 detector in there with you. It's several things you can use to keep you warm inside of a tent like this, but you got to remember something. When you're using a, a nylon tent, heat rises. And at the top of every tent is screen mesh. And the only thing over the top of that is the little rain fly. So your heat is constantly escaping. All right. So I say pack up on the blankets. If you're going to get one of these nylon tents and you're going to try to use it in the winter, pack up on the blankets, the sleeping bags, um, thermal blankets, DC uh, electric blankets, stuff like that. If you If that's what you're going to do. It's possible, but you got some work to do. Okay. Okay. Let me keep going down here. What's going on, Boss Hall? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Okay. <clears throat> so, wish I could make it, bro. I'm in California. It's a bit of a drive. One day, one day, one day. We'll see. We'll meet up one of these days, man. Uh, Led, do you have a bug out tent? Well, <laughs> yeah, man, I got several bug out tents. I got tents that stay in my car. I got tents that the Bushnell pop out tent stays in our. Tr I got one in Lady Led's truck, one in my truck. Um. And then I got my one-man tents. Those stay in my bug-out bags. So in every bug-out bag, we got a one-man tent. But then we have the pop-out Bushnell two-man. Well, they say three-man tent. Okay. But yes, yes, I do. Let me keep going here. Yeah, Virginia Bushcrafters say better stick with the tarps. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me see. All right, Erica, my fly family. What's up, little sister? Say my wheels are turning. I need like three of them, two bedrooms and a sitting area. That's what this is. All right, let's go on a tent before it get dark. I mean, let's go on a tour before it get dark. Erica, my fly family, this is, this is for you. I ain't going to be able to see y'all until I come back. <clears throat> But for now, we're going to chop it up. I got to go take these in here, too, because I want to show you all something. Uh, these, I'm going to put these in the, the comment section below from Stan Sport. They are, they, they are dope is what they are. Check this out. You got your light, your night light with three settings and your bug zapper. And it's rechargeable. This is dope. And yes, I've tried them out. And which one got the bugs on them? I blow them off. This one still got little bug crumbs in it. I had this in the house to get the gnats out of my house that was flying around my plants. And that boy worked. So just to let you know. So I'm going to put these up in this tin in here. So y'all can come with me. And again, this is for Erica, my fly family, because the, the T8 has two rooms. The T4, of course, is one room. And this is your screen tent that's just, it's huge. This screen is huge if you watch this video enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y'all into T8. I don't do no breaking up. Okay. Almost busted my tailbone getting here last time. This is T8. And I'm going to, to set this light up. You don't need the bug back. These are best. These bug zappers are best for inside the tent, not necessarily outside. They're just, there's too many bugs living out there. 
they are perfect for indoors. I'm trying to find a good spot between the two. We can be here. There we go. So, got a light fixture there for us. But this is usually the room we will make bread hang out in. And we have another door. That can close off. I'm not going to close it off, but you can close it off, zip this shut, and you can have two separate tents, two separate rooms, or, you know, this is your main sleeping area here, and then you can have the bathroom there, and all your gear set up in there. That's what we end up there. You can sleep in this side, and then we'll set our gear up in here. All the T4 is is a smaller version of this. It's just a one side room. Okay. I'm gonna take some questions, and then we're gonna get we're gonna get to the good stuff. Close that down. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. I only had one cheek on. One leg up, like half pint. Okay. Any questions so far? Let me let me let me get to it here. I'm seeing if I can see any questions. I sounded bad. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh. That's because the microphone is on my computer. Forgot about that. My bad, y'all. I forgot the mic ain't connected to my phone. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Well, y'all saw everything. Y'all didn't hear me. What what? Ah! What's <laughs> up? That's what I'm talking about right what there. Look, got my brother in the house. Look, I've been telling her forever, like, hey. I said, get Billy on this. Now tell Billy, I said, come on now. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Good to see y'all, man. What's going on? 
Nothing, good word, nothing. Bro. How you feel? Man, I'm feeling good. You hey. know me. Hey, man, listen. I, 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 I was thinking about getting the Airbnb, but I ain't worried about it no more. I, I, I know where I... <laughs> That's that's all I need. What you got right there? It's like a mobile command center, boy. And that's why I called it. It's the command center right here. This is Moonbase Alpha. Mm -hmm. This really, yep. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. You spend a little extra money, but it's because of the quality of the tents. Yes, it's right. the quality. Right, it's the quality. It looks good. Boy, it yeah, looks good. Man. Look. Three I know weeks. this sounds crazy. Three weeks is my birthday. I'm just saying he just gave us the grand tour. Woo. I'm just saying. I got to do a little overtime. <laughs> hey, do a little no, overtime. hey, look. Look. I'm look, man, make her happy. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this now. Lady led the reason I got the gazelle years ago cuz I we love camping. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is we get no and she like, well, I ain't trying to be all going through tunnels and stuff no more. And yep. I don't, I don't want nothing that I can't stand up in. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, man. Yep. You know. That's how we be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looked good, but, but but that's not too expensive, right there. That that ain't. No. You know, that's that's hella where I want to be, cost wise, and yeah. the quality. Like you said, you have yeah. it for years. And yeah, man, even I know this is gonna sound crazy, but even the zipper here in the zipper, I said, Ooh, Look. that's strong. One hand, hmm. See, yeah, so, so, <laughs> one hand. So, you know, you, I, I ain't gotta hold this one. In. Hey, no. we gotta step on one side, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, it's getting worn out, so I gotta step right. on one side just to pull the zipper up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. None of that. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how durable they are. Truly. If you go back and look at the video that I did today earlier. I did. Okay. I stepped and tripped into that and I edited that out a little bit. Oh, I <laughs> fell all up in there. I rolled in there like a bag of potatoes. Believe that. <laughs> because I caught my, my boot caught right on the zipper and my, the whole thing kind of came in with me. I was in there. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to edit that out because I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I was careful coming out of it, but going in was a mess. But that just let you know that zipper is so strong. It did. I thought the zipper was going to be finished. Yeah. Right. None of, you None know, of it. Or, or the tenor be tore or something. No. Nope. Right. Not at all. Yeah. I like them. I like it a lot. Hey, Les, we was looking at those, uh, those, those lights, those, uh, the ambiance lights, or the dome lights. This, yeah, okay. This look, this is the best things in sliced bread right here. Mm -hmm. This is it's a camp light. This is by Stan Sport, and I forgot to put it in the description box. But is that? But this the sweet part that works. It really works. Get out of here, man! <laughs> listen, you gonna hear them snap, crackle, and pop in a minute. Right. Look, because, I'll be walking around just to get them. <laughs> right. And look, I, I would do it, but that people would be like, you know, the the Peter Animal. people might call me like, that's <laughs> cruel to the animals. I I don't want nothing. I don't want no smoke with them no more. Mm -hmm. But this, literally, once I got them, I said, shoot, I could just use these in the house, and I set them up with all the plants and the uh, stuff that I'm growing in the house where gnats be. Yep. Yeah. I came out, this thing was full of nets. I said, oh, oh, See? so you ain't just got to wait for camp, you know? Right. You can set these right in your house. Winter time is coming and all of us is bringing our plants in, our little trees. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to have these all over the place. The sweetest part is they rechargeable. Stop playing. No yeah. batteries. No batteries. No so, battery. Oh, I see it. You got I'm, it. I'm ready. For, listen, I'm yes. upgrading my camping wear for February 2nd through the 5th. Oh, Don't, say you Don't say you're coming. Don't say you're going to be here now. February 2nd Ooh. through the 5th. Listen, Pip, my tent is going to be full of fat. Listen, trust and believe. It's a feeling that I can't. I can't even show on YouTube 
because number one, you gotta be there. It's one of them things you ever yeah. been to high school and they'd be like, Hey man, you missed the party last night. You had to be there. You heard all about it. You mm -hmm. heard yeah. all about the stuff that happened, but it's not the same as the people that were there. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the stuff that I can put on YouTube was just a fraction of that tour of the tents, the whole thing. I can only put so much on YouTube and some people, they like, Hey, you know, I really don't want to be seen, but the, yeah. the scene be so good. I record it anyway, but I have to edit certain things out. It never failed. Yeah. Some of the best stuff to see or the best things to happen is usually happening when somebody that don't want to be in the scene <laughs> is in the scene. <laughs> so I got to respect them. You know, I got to be like, all right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get she it. excited. Yeah. Though, man. She keep talking about it. Look, if y'all need any, if you got any questions, please let me know before you spend your money. True that. But this one, this is that one. This is that yeah. one that's really what I like about Gazelle the best. I ain't gonna be out here all day setting up no tent with stakes and sticks and uh which side goes where. Y'all saw me set these tents up, just popping them out. Yep. They are literally that easy to put up, and it's even faster taking them down. I can start taking this down right now by just pulling on this right here. Look, it's ready to go. If I do that all the way around, it's going to drop on my head. And now I set up. You can't go wrong. Man. You can't go wrong. When your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> you know Libra season is coming up. Oh. Libra season is right around the corner. But he don't even help set up the tent no more. What are you talking about? Uh-uh. Now we got to do this on Lex's hey, channel. Bring it on. I, I watch your channel all the time. <laughs> I know. Time, see, what it is is this here. There's two things have, have to happen. She get her, her her tent together. I have to cut the grass. I tell her, I have to cut the grass before you put the tent down. And right. so she'll do that. And then sometime I'll leave it be like that. But the last couple of times, I help her set it up. But as many times she done set this thing up and took it down, she still don't remember what goes where. Wait. Right. No. I color, I, so I pit, I pit colored tape on it so I know what goes where. Where goes what now? The red ones go crisscross. The blue yeah. ones go across. I, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. When you get a tent where you got to start color coding them, it's time to get something else. Get something. <laughs> exactly. Something else. Well, hey, that's brother. what I'm saying hey, to you. It was wonderful hanging out with you today, man. I had a good time. Enjoy <laughs> in the chat. That's all I needed to hear. That's it. <laughs> hey, it's time to go. Time I'm to telling go. you. True story yeah. is I'm gonna say this. I got a I had a bunch of cheap tents in the past. I've had a lot of good tents, but I, I started learning in the last good 10 years. Cause we camp, I camp more than I put, I don't put it on YouTube. The right. only time I start really putting our camping sessions on YouTube is when the stuff happened in 2020. Like people was getting put out of their houses, and I was like, here you go, right here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know. So I started showing people our camping, but we camp constantly. But I'm going to say this with that is you, you spend a little money, a little bit, go a yeah. long way. You ain't got to worry about, did I, did I spray the tarp? Did I waterproof the tarp? I ain't waterproof these gazelles yet. Yeah. And they've been through hell. Matter of fact, the day that I set these up, y'all in Georgia, so y'all know. I yeah. set these up last week, and as soon as I set them up, it started raining. It rained for two days, mm -hmm. and before, we had a lightning storm. Uh, when that uh Hurricane Lee came yeah. through, and we take got a little taste of these was out. These were set up, and no water got in or nothing. So nice. and I didn't even spray them. Mm. You See, know? They, mine's would have got fumbled over. It no. would have been. I would have been swimming in the tent. I bet. <laughs> hey, yeah. man, it's true story. We got to take the shop back in the tent every now and again. See, look, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing yep. wrong with it. Because listen, I'm good for leaving the windows open. I am. I'm notorious <laughs> for leaving the windows open. 
And I, I'm going to tell you a good shop, a shop vac where you ain't got to worry about like bringing a big shop vac. Go mm-hmm. get you one of those Home Deep, Depot bucket heads. Mm-hmm. It's 20. It's like 20. It used to be like $20. I don't know what it is now. All mm-hmm. it is is a lid. This that's the vacuum. And you put it on the five gallon bucket. Any bucket. Yep. And it got a tube on it. You could pack all that off in your gear and not have to worry about bringing no big bucket. Right. That's what I have with me every time for just in case. Like some people are sweeping their tents out with you know, because mm-hmm. we always around a lot of sand and dirt. Right. They sweep it out and I pull that bucket head out and I start vacuuming that mug out. Mm-hmm. Right. Quick and easy. You yep, instead of wasting time. Man. So you know, it's it's certain stuff when y'all when y'all see what these people be having in their tents, mm-hmm. I be looking like I be damned. Never thought of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Easy. And a lot of the people, a lot of folks, they have like like really complex ridiculousness. <laughs> but it's some people stuff so simplistic, but highly functional. Yeah. It'll make me rethink about the money I just wasted. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. So trust I always me. try to tell people if you can have something that could do more than one thing, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's your best bet. That's I don't right. want something that can only do one thing because it, it's just you it adding space extra then, space. Yeah, and what exactly. you use it for is minimal. Exactly. Now yeah. that right there, what you just said about everything needs at least at least more than one function, right? Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm in love with this screen tent. And when I yeah. saw uh my cart runneth over, when I saw her camp, her camp was right next to ours. Mm-hmm. And when I saw this in person, it's been in my Amazon cart for over a year. But when I <laughs> see it in person, this is the part that sold me. This is this. I'm I gotta take oh, y'all ain't gonna be able to hear me. This right here, these screens. That means now it's not just a screen house no more. It's an actual tent. I got right. three, three more coming for these. And you can close this off. This will be a whole tent that somebody can stay in. You put a tarp on the ground, and then that's your floor. You ain't got to worry about it. Yep. Man, so, I, I ain't going to lie. That look military gray right there. It, you know what? I like this more than I like the T4. I ain't gonna lie. It's bigger. Is for some reason it's bigger, more space, and it's multifunctional. Yeah, so, right. you know, and it's made out of that same material that the rest of them, the rest of the gazelles. This is a gazelle too, so they mm-hmm. all the same. So that's shout shout out for uh my car runneth over because she was like, see, I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had I had to drop my whole. You know, you can't tell me nothing. Yeah. nothing. <laughs> Look, man, I got video footage of me going to other people's camp, and I'm I'm fanning out on people's gear, like I had to like con- contain myself a little bit because you know <laughs> it it got a it got a little um you know when the Beatles the girls be screaming for the Beatles and stuff you know. <laughs> And Michael Jackson hit the stage. I was going to people camp like, oh my god! Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they don't know it was so real. I I looked at a lot of my footage. I said I can't show that. I was I was real. I was real. Uh, um, you know, like Stop, a wet napkin right there. That wasn't. But that that's wasn't. what makes you humble and very transparent. Is that you're willing to learn from other people? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what that's that's the things that sometimes we some people want to see from us as content creators. Right. It's like we we're try, not trying to say we know everything. Are we we the ones at the cutting edge? Like you right. have to find out right. what you get from us. Right. right. Hell well, no. I gotta be honest. <clears throat> I ain't gonna say it was humble. Not that <laughs> part. Yeah, I was acting. No, it, it it was not. It was I was I was out of character. Okay, <laughs> every now and again you gotta show you know you know. right. Uh-uh, not right. that part, bro. Not that part. I would have started getting some phone calls. You know, like hey, Led man, you sure was looking good today at camp. You know, 
Yeah. <laughs> I was, hey, I you was. See your, you see your boy on the channel, right? <laughs> right, right, right. See, like, hey, 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 hey. Everybody else, I can see uh, uh, RGG calling me. Hey, hey, what was that? Well, uh -huh. well, <laughs> hey, bro, go take that down. Yeah, what was <laughs> you doing? Say, hey, go take that down. <laughs> hey, what you doing, man? Nah, I, I don't think you need to leave that one up. <laughs> That's what I was like. Yeah, some of this stuff I can't show because I was, listen, I, my mind was blown. The best part about being at somebody else's camp, to me, is like being on somebody else's channel live. Yeah, so, sure. and to see how y'all get down on, on this, you know, on your channel is one thing, but to see it in person, oh, it's, just, oh, it's different. It's different. It's, it's, it's different. so much. It's like, okay, I missed the, um, I missed the gathering, the meetup, the RGG meetup, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because of the business. But I'm telling you, y'all already know when we meet each other in person, it's just not the same as talking to each other on this computer. Yeah. Right? yeah. Not, you that know, feeling is a whole different feeling. I don't right. care how good you know somebody, when you see them in person, it's like, damn, I know this dude. You know? Mm -hmm. I know him. Yes. And I, I keep seeing, like, y'all saw me, y'all saw me fan out when uh, uh, Twister came on I, to this day. <laughs> yeah. I, I Man, he was speechless. I was like, wait, he's not even saying nothing. Man. <laughs> Me, hey. me not talking. Right, right. Because I, you don't know how I used to spit this dude lyrics like they was mine, you know, mm, back in the right. day. You know, like I just got done writing this, son. <laughs> and I was like, he, he right right there. So hey, when when you on that note, humble as can be. Very hey. cool. Hey. Very. Cool as a fan. I, I lightweight had to. You know, again, you, you gotta keep. I gotta keep my. You know, mm -hmm. I, I ain't want to be like hey, they like me. They really like me. <laughs> Thank you. This is for you. I didn't want to. You know what I'm saying? I didn't right. want to go there. But that that guy right there, he he don't know how much of a fan i am to the point i got off that y'all saw all smooth and cool like all right y'all have a nice night all right, all right. Peace peace out. All right. Nice i got off like oh. i said hey hey man guess who i just met i called, my friend, I called everybody back in ohio like y'all ain't gonna know y'all ain't gonna understand you ain't gonna believe this you ain't gonna believe this look i'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the video it, it ain't screenshot or nothing i swear to god i swear to god <laughs> so yeah man man hey so is what and, and it's in your home it's in your home next year I know you know about it. No, no. ready. H hold on, no. hold on. Let me set my little bug thing up here. Oh, shoot! I, I want, I want to hear everything. Give me two ticks. Mm -hmm. This is even work. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo! I'm getting a little, little buttery fingers. Now, see, I'm gonna have to straighten myself up. I'm gonna have to straighten myself up, folks. Gonna start asking too many questions. Look, let's just put this on tape. Let's just put this on tape. <laughs> Turn it upside down. There we go. Turn on the lights. <laughs> Turn on. Nintendo. All right. Okay. Now what? In you said in my hometown? Well, not your hometown per se, but in your home state. It's in Ohio. Okay. Dayton area. Same. Uh, thing. 2024, right there. So you got to you. I don't. You I'm know. Gonna, this is what I'm gonna do. No matter what, because she's my scheduler for everything. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to make sure. Do me a favor. Nobody sent me no information yet. Not that I noticed. Somebody right. send me some information. Send it to ladyled73 at yahoo.com. I got you. I got Please, you. Please, Lady Led, because Damn. I get hundreds of emails a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know. I'll, I'll send it over to you, and, and, and we got you. So just... Okay. You, okay. You, you know, you good. You good. Yeah. Cuz I I you're still got to show I still got to show them trophy. Do you understand? They still in the box because I'm like I'm not showing them until I, it got to be proper. I'm not just going to say, "Hey y'all, look what I got." Look what I got. Yeah, no, 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 no. It ain't going out like that. That's why I was like, "Look, they are literally I have never even opened the box to see them. Nothing. The tape is still on, undisturbed." Yeah. So 
because right. man, that mean the world to me. And I, I want to give people when they send me something, I be wanting to give them the credit that it does deserve and what they deserve because I know how much time it took to produce any of that, to send it, to organize. Uh, uh, Erica, I know you was organized everything because I know I know they wasn't doing it. I, I know they wasn't doing it, right? They was sitting back looking good. Boy, they, was, they was a little rough around the edges. I just I came in and just bit. moved it over. Just well, moved see, it over. that's me. That's me. I will I will tell everybody with a kind heart and, and no malice intention whatsoever. Yeah. I got you. I take care of you. Just do this for me. I got this, that. I'll be there. And then with the schedule that I'll be having mm -hmm. and the business, I totally forget. And people be like, hey, uh, remember that time you had mm -hmm. said? And I'm like, oh. you know, that's yep. why I'll be just telling her, I'll write something on the refrigerator. And she'd be like, what's that? I don't know. Just schedule that. Because you know I done forgot it already. I don't even know what I wrote on the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the schedule. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sending that all over, man, because okay. I, I really, you know, I don't want you to miss that experience. Even her, she'll have a great time. Plus, we got the women's conference too. So that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. Deal. So. And all those people, man, I wanted to meet so bad. I was looking at the pictures. I was looking at the videos, the shorts, the pictures, and I was like, man. But you got to take care of your business hey. first. Hey, so Larry. we understood. Next, next, this coming year. I want to see you on stage with Twister while he performs. No. Yes. No. Yes. Let me tell we you gotta something. Make that happen. I'm telling you something right now. <laughs> if you want to see a grown 50 year old man that don't need diapers yet, pee on himself. There you go. That's how to get that started. Oh, man. Ladies, that is going to be like. He's gonna it? have a stroke if he don't get that. Right. I'm holding the mic like this. They be like, What's he doing? What's that new dance? It's called the stroke. <laughs> I be stroking. Man, stroking. I'm telling you. Listen, okay, everybody, I'm going to say this, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail about this. Mm -mm. Everybody love Eminem. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say it. I'm going to go and say it. Now, I love Eminem, too. Okay, let's get Let's Come on. Right. But. But well, where do you think Eminem got this from? Ooh. Preach. When I Eminem agree. first came out, I was like way hating because I was like, just somebody's imitating Twister. Just That's somebody's awesome. imitating Twister. But now that I know better, he wasn't imitating Twister. That was like one of his heroes. So, of course, right. you know what I'm saying? His he style is going to be in there. Yeah. So, yeah, but twist, hey, nah, nah. All I need to see is twist and let up on stage. That's all I just for a minute. Hey, just you, like, ah! no, you you don't want to see that. I'm telling you, because yeah. I'm gonna say this: when I get crunk, I don't know how to shut it off. That's one of my problems. Look at me on this damn channel. I'll be like, I'm gonna just be on here for a few minutes. <laughs> Four hours later, like you know. And think about this. I do that by myself. Yeah. I run my mouth by myself with no mm -hmm. help. When I when I get cranked up, man, it, it's hard. Usually what makes me stop is she be behind the camera, like, you know, like a flash or something. Like, I got to go. I see y'all tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. I done got flashed. Yep. Yeah. I began. Yeah. Y'all yeah. don't want to see that. Y'all don't want to see it. You don't so see, not only are you his fan, but he's also a fan of yours. So when you do show up and he'd be like, hey, Lay, can you stand here and shoot my firearms with me? That's that's a, that's what I'm going to tell me. everybody say. Stop. Stop it. We, we taking videos. We going live. Yeah. This is what we yeah. doing right now, right here. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Again, see, my name is Lead Farmer. Mm -hmm. Lead came first, okay? It's a reason for that that I can't show on. I done told everybody I can't show on this channel no more. But y'all right. don't even you gotta see where she at. Y'all don't even know, okay, that I'm waiting on my order from PSA mm -hmm. like now. I'm waiting on them to be like, your order is in, you can come pick them up now. What'd you get? <laughs> nothing is changed with me. I just spent 
the other night listening to Erica and Gina and Gina while y'all was talking. I I don't even think I could say that on YouTube. Not just show it, but say it. Put, let's put it like this. My Beretta 1301 came with the, the pistol grip. Mm. I'm not a fan on that one. You want so, the bird stock. Yeah, I just put, right. I just put the normal. And I was doing that listening to y'all because I'm still true to it. I just can't show that part. You know, yeah. can't yeah. show that part. Yeah. But if yeah. I, look, I'm going to tell you, now y'all about to get me fanning out. <laughs> I sit there and watch him in the gun camp, Black Rambo. See, if everybody actually really saw my algorithm, part of the reason why I can't keep progressing because my algorithm have me in the 2A community. You know what I'm saying? And the gardening community is like, which one is you going with? Ah, man. Be hard. I know it. I know right. It. Right. So that's, More that's new still and me. New things keep coming out. No, oh, I know. Mm -hmm. don't, even, don't even get me started. Don't get, don't get me started on that because I never shut up. Because I even told RGG, that platypus. Oh. Don't. Don't even start me. Don't even start mm. me because you're about to have me start going to sell some blood to get the money. Listen. Boy, I'd sell some plasma. Mm. Listen, we, so you know, our child just had a birthday. We don't even have one. And the child got one. Yeah, Alex got one. See, the it's, child yeah, it's got one. I think, I think we better go now because yeah, that, we, we better. Just, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Y'all, y'all about to mess me up. See, oh, oh look, cause see, we talking about camping. Y'all done took me down that alley. You don't <laughs> want me going in that dark alley. You y'all don't want. I'll be listening to y'all discussions, and I'll be like, I got so much to say. <laughs> I'll be listening to Zach and all of y'all on the on the panel, and I'll be sitting back there like, oh my god, I type out a whole. <laughs> god, I bet not sitting there. I bet not, I bet not sitting there because. I was listen. I had so much to say that night that that troll came in was messing with Zach and Zach was entertaining that. Right. Really, I saw your face. Oh, I you saw know your face is. like. <laughs> and I'm like, all I kept saying, man, leave this dude alone. Yeah. <laughs> coming on my channel, let this dude go. And y'all entertaining yeah. him like, man, let this dude. He gonna take you down that rabbit hole of madness. Way yeah. down, way down. Yeah. Y'all see me and Billy said. You know, Les send them straight to the cornfield. He, right. he don't even be. And I start cracking up because I'm like, man, I don't play no games, man. The, the more y'all hang out here on YouTube, the bigger you get. Trust and believe me. They pop up. They pop up. Forget the pop up. It's a brand of crazy. I'm telling you, it has a taste of its own mm -hmm. that you don't quite understand when people start showing up at your house. People start seeing you in different places and sneaking up on you. Looking for you. Looking for you, man. You it's mm -hmm. just not, I don't even understand. I still don't understand it. But yeah. it happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. 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 Get ready for that. We uh I I I I, I don't know. It happens <laughs> in, at the weirdest damn times. And it seemed like I don't know if you get this, but as soon as you get a little further when you've been, that's when it happens. You know what? Every freaking time. Yeah. Every time. I remember I was going doing the my 200 subscriber celebration thing, just mm -hmm. announcing it. And like my whole world turned upside down from trolls. Like, yeah. like upside down. Like, what the fuck is going? It's just part of the, now I know. It's just part of the what the what Hollywood say it's part of the business. Yeah, this yeah. part of the YouTube business now. It's just right. part of it. It, yeah. it you, come with the territory. People don't realize one thing. There are workers and there are riders. There are there are drivers and riders mm -hmm. on the yeah. bus. It's the dude that's driving the bus, and then it's the people that's on the bus letting him do all the driving. Like, I want you to do all the work. You the one gotta stay woke, you the one gotta stay alert. You the one got to not get in a crash. And then when we get to the destination, the, the writers take all the credit and say, hey, I got here, uh, you know. Yeah. 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 That's the problem. 
it's yeah. people that don't want to do the work <clears throat> and they just want to just catch the ride. They just mm-hmm. want the, they want the heat of the flame, but they don't want to start the fire. So then people I stay away from, but I'm telling you, it's something nowadays people look, look, for instance, it's, it's channels out there that literally their whole channel is built on talking about other either content creators or mm. entertainers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I agree. I be seeing them. Yeah. So it is what it is. I'm used to it now. Don't make me no never mind, you know. Yeah. yeah. But look, but. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get out of here. But if no, any, hey, hold yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah give it to get out of here because you say that and your ass ain't going to I know already, yo. Uh, you ain't taking me for this ride. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, no, I gotta work in the morning. There you go. No, man, I would, I would do y'all like man. that. I would oh, do y'all God. like that. Listen, but it was I, hang I, out I with really, you. I really want y'all. To come to camp. I, matter of fact, let me let me say this. Here we go. Four hours. We on four hours. Now. I don't look. I don't punch back in now. I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and people don't quite understand. Like all of these meetups and all of these different gatherings, I don't think people understand. That's why they don't support them the way they should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because people don't understand it's a movement Mm -hmm. that's a word that we don't even use no more yeah this is not just it's not just a couple friends meeting up and saying this this was cool it was a nice time it's a movement of unity and that's the part that people don't get yeah i agree when i'm gonna say this when we were at camp it happened a little bit this time But last February, last February, it's a lot that I could not show on YouTube. Yeah. I promise you, we shut that boy down. People was coming through, Mm -hmm. filming us. That's how, that's how we, that's how much we stood out. People we know wasn't with us. Yeah. Was was filming us. And everybody kept saying, Lead. There's people over there shooting video. I said, is it the police? No, just people keep walking through and videotaping us. And they keep going around and around. And I've seen it myself. Mm-hmm. We was doing the the um, the um victory trail walk mm-hmm. through the wood. Mm-hmm. And somebody said, "Um, did you guys come on a bus? <laughs> <laughs> I had to calm so many people down like, uh-uh, 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 mm-hmm. not here. Now here, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know. Yeah. Well, well, now remember, this South Carolina, where we had a lot of people from up north. Like, what the hell they mean? Like, yeah. Like, that, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, somebody ran into another part of our group that didn't want to join the hike, so they were doing something completely different. Mm-hmm. Now these people did not even know that these people was with us. They was like, "I think your group." Oh shit. The rest of you are in the woods over over that way. Damn. I got that report and they was like, Lay, it, I could take you to their camp. I, ah, ah. Just the thing is, it was a movement that made people head swivel. They couldn't help but see us. I was they had to recognize us. Yes. They had right. to. And right. when they see that. It, it makes me feel like I didn't take it negatively. I could have, but right. I took it as we just made one hell of an impression. Wasn't yeah. no fighting, wasn't no cussing, wasn't no loud music, wasn't the stuff that they see on the news, see? Yeah. They saw unity, and that was more that was more scary than seeing us fighting in the streets. That's right. That's see, right. Seeing that right. kind of unity amongst a bunch of people like-minded people having a good time mm-hmm. trust and believe that was it was such it was so beautiful uh, we had a lady drive from maryland she just drove from maryland mm. just to give us some canning jars it's in that video just to give us some canning jars and got back on the road and left Shit. What? 
I said, I said, look, you don't gotta go. I got an extra ten out here. She said, no, I just wanted to meet y'all. She That's kissed us on our big. cheeks and stuff, and I was like, that that was kind of weird, but you know. That's, what do you that's, say? That's impact, man. That that's yeah. that's people realizing and us realizing that we are a part of people's lives. Yeah, and that's yeah. impact. And when you talk about unity, you you talk about doing something that that um is almost what people might think is intangible, and then all of a sudden you extend the olive branch and say, "Yeah, come with me. Right, yep. come share what I do with me." Right. And man, I drove from Maryland too. Right. And you know something, the best part, this is the best part of this to me is, and I know it's a lot of people that's watching us right now, still watching me right this minute. And this is the question in the back of their mind. <clears throat> when they come onto a new channel or meet somebody on a new channel or something, and they keep seeing good stuff happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got two thoughts in your mind. What is this dude up to? Mm -hmm. The other one is, okay. He's, he's doing this, he's extending this, he's giving this, he's giving this information. What's in it for him? Yeah. I know it's in the back of people's mind. I know it is, because I'm, I'm human, I do the same thing. But yeah. it's nothing more rewarding just to figure out, man, I just want us to be cool. I just That's want it. us to just chill, stop the crap, and just come together and be cool. That's what's in it for me. Yeah. That's what's in it for me. It ain't the money. People keep thinking it's YouTube money. is all. It ain't what people think. No, okay. it's that side stuff, that side hustle. It's not the yeah. YouTube. Everybody cutting each other throat for YouTube checks. It ain't even like that. Yeah, no. like that. Man, that's that's some. We talk about this all the time, and um, we actually question ourselves, like, like what is what is the actual uh, what provokes you to do it? And man, to me, it's just having camaraderie. That's all. That's yeah. it. Learning yeah. new stuff, teaching new stuff. And, and being able to touch base with somebody on the other side of the country at the drop of a dime to have a good conversation. Yes. That's it. That's it. And just to meet other real people, because <clears throat> every one of these meetups that every one of these groups is having from the 2A to um, the one in Savannah to the one I'm doing, people keep thinking that we're making all kind of money on this, like this is some kind of music concert. Oh, no. I, right. I am losing money. I heard vision. Losing money. Money. We lose money. We lose money on this. Yes. And people don't realize it. They just think this is all on YouTube paying for this or the sponsors pay for it. No, this is literally coming out of all of our pockets. And the reason we're doing it, you ain't look, even if you made a little money, you made gas money. Mm -hmm. To yep. get there and back, you didn't make nothing significant enough to do anything with. It's just so we can all be together. And for yeah. no, I don't care what nobody say. I got the record books and the tax records to show. I lose money. What yeah. comes out of my what comes out of my business account goes into this. That's where it is. And you can mm -hmm. just you can count all the nickels and dimes yourself. Yeah, right. Well, I know right. it's it's all about unity. The the worst part is people they don't believe they don't believe it's that good. It's too good to be true. Right. Yep. Until they right. go that one time and they can't stop talking about it. There you go. That's there you be. go. Yep. That's what it go. Be. So man, I so hope hey, y'all show up. See, you're sneaky. You did it. To <laughs> me. Bye. Man. Bye. Hey, uh, Tell the I say hello. Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all go. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my thank fly you. family, Billy Bye. and Erica. All right. Anytime. If y'all got any questions, y'all can hit me up anytime. All right. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Peace. Billy and Erica from my fly family, y'all. Give it up. Give them a round of applause while I cut this light on. Because I'm, I'm starting to get a little nervous, baby. There we go. That's what I've been wanting to do right there. There we go. All right. We're going to do this. And we're going to end this on a high note. I'm going to answer a few more questions. Because those, those good people right there, that part of the family, that's my extended family right there. If y'all are not subscribed to Billy from My Fly Family, or Erica, my fly family. Her channel is Erica, my fly family, and Billy's is my fly family. Please drop what you're doing 
and go subscribe to those channels. All right. We got regular gun guy. Please go subscribe to my brother and Zach, fat guy with guns. Go. Everybody is always asking me, Leah, how do we protect ourselves? Leah, what do what should I be working on? What should I get? When should I go to the range? How can I go to the range? That's information that I can't give anymore. But I send y'all to the, my extended family that can tell you. Listen, triple threat firearms and training. Uh, all of these people are in that community that can guide you in that direction. And I legally can't anymore. But I can show you where to go. So please go check them out and they'll, they'll hook you up, okay? Um, let me see. I'm gonna try my best to get the last few questions, and um, I'm gonna I'm keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna get the last few questions. I can't go all the way back because it goes far. Somebody said it's all about unity. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Hey, Toya's pantry said, "How is that tent compared to the blow up tent? There is no comparison whatsoever. Zero. L let me." Let me tell you about that blow up tent. So y'all about to have me on here forever about that blow up tent. My cart runneth over showed us all a blow up tent that it took everybody to another level of the game. There is nothing out here like that. There is zero zilch, nothing zero like that blow up tent. I've been putting those blow up tents down for years <clears throat> not just that i've also been offered to show blow up tents from several companies and until i saw my cart runneth over her blow up tent i was not interested so of course i contacted some of those companies like now what was y'all saying about them blow up tents again <laughs> come come talk to me because I've never seen nothing like I thought it was a gimmick. I thought it was I thought it was a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's the coldest tent. It made every last tent I've ever bought in my life combined. Combined. It made every tent, no matter how much money I spent. Every tent. The White Duck, Vivor, both of them. Uh, Kodiak and all of my... I, I got military surplus tents. All of everything I've ever purchased combined, it made it like toilet paper. You could wipe your butt with it compared to that. I, that's my word. Because it was made out of the same high grade material, quicker to set up like a gazelle. It just, just blew my mind. It almost made me, it all made me mad because I'm like, where have I been? I've been so full of myself thinking I got top high grade tent, you know. Mm -mm. No. Thank you, TLC in the garden. My cart runneth over. You already know. My cart runneth over, y'all. If y'all not familiar with my cart runneth over, this is our little sister, new sister here in the greenhouse lounge. Please go subscribe to her channel. Support our sister. She new to YouTube. And trust me. The information she giving you already is just oh, it's so overwhelming. You would you would actually be at a disadvantage if you don't go subscribe to her channel. We sat down, me, my wife, her, and her friend. We sat down around the campfire all night. The nada she and oh, this is my first time. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to pick up one of these burnt up hot dogs and throw it at you. You keep on saying that because this, you just ain't your first time at this rodeo show. All right. Because she was killing it. Please go subscribe. She's right here on the screen. My cart runneth over here on YouTube. Please go subscribe to her. Let's get her numbers up. So this this young lady, she needs uh she needs your, your help, your boost, because you're going to need her help. She got some gear. Look, look family. She got me out here buying gear. Me. <laughs> me. I ain't shame of it. I ain't shame to say it. Here's her YouTube channel right here. Thank you, TLC in the Garden. I'll just uh TLC in the Garden just put her um 
YouTube channel right here in the chat, please go over there and support our sister. Please, this is what this is all about. If we don't, everybody keep complaining about their channel don't do well. Their channel don't do well. That's because don't nobody support e each other. You know, <clears throat> let me let me tell you a quick little story, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. My routine every morning, when I wake up in the morning, I have a routine. I open my eyes. I say a prayer and I thank the Heavenly Father for letting me be here on this earth another day to open my eyes. Next thing I do is I kiss my wife and I thank God for her. And I won't listen to another sound. I won't listen to my phone. I won't listen to the radio. I won't listen to any other sound until I hear my wife's voice. That's my routine. True story. I can't make that up. I don't care how emergency it got to be where I got to get out of the bed. I won't. I do not want to listen to another voice until I hear my wife's voice first. I don't want to hear nobody on YouTube's voice because I always feel like that's going to lead me and guide me through the rest of my day. The reason I'm telling you this is because that's kind of this thing with YouTube and support. Everybody wants better things to happen to them and for them. But you, the first thing you do is imagine you jump. I jumped out the bed, went down there, got my coffee, made me some breakfast and start getting on with my day. I didn't kiss my wife. I didn't do none of the stuff. I didn't say my prayers. I didn't thank God. Imagine this. We do that on YouTube. You start watching the video, getting the knowledge and you wonder why the knowledge ain't working out for you. Right. You're wondering why the knowledge ain't working out for you. You consume the knowledge. You absorb the knowledge. But you wonder, why didn't it work out for me as good as it worked out for them? You didn't even give them thanks. You didn't give, you didn't hit their thumbs up. Nothing. Look, you don't, you getting any kind of knowledge or this entertaining you for just a few minutes, that's worth the thumbs up. Enough. That's that one little bit of support. So we start getting the information before we even give them the appreciation. And I think that's just why things don't work out. When your day doesn't work out the way you want it to, did you miss your routine? Did you just start your day without giving thanks and appreciation to the people that support you and keep you where you are? Did you just start your day like you, you run everything? So every video I watch, I hit the thumbs up button first. Because if I'm this interested, whether I like the knowledge or not, you got my attention some kind of way you got my attention. So that's thumbs up enough right there because it take a lot to get my attention, especially as busy as I am. You got my attention. So when you come and slide into a video and start watching it, Hit that thumb up. Give them the appreciation before you absorb all the knowledge that they're going to give you. You know, I'm just saying, uh, give them the appreciation. So when you go over to my sister channel, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to her channel. So far, I promise you, I, this is my this is my promise to you. You you won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Go over there and see all the people that I always tell you all to go check out. This is the thing that gets me. If you if you like watching me, don't y'all ever wonder who I watch? There's <laughs> people out there subscribe to me and say, led you the man, led you the man. Okay, but you know I watch people too. I support people too. I didn't get all this knowledge by myself. You know, and I tell you, look, what's the name of them doing this over on that channel? That's what everybody, everybody was giving me praise about learning how to can they food. And I made sure that each one of y'all knew I'm not teaching you how to can. Homestead Heart teaching me how to can. So if you want to know the deep, dark secrets of this stuff, go to her channel. Me, I'm her student. 
I don't I don't give me praise for that. <laughs> don't you know, don't give me praise for that. So I think this is make these YouTube channels work better. People keep thinking it's some kind of magical unicorn that's supposed to just boost you up to 100,000 subscribers overnight. It's really not. It's the networking. And, and honestly, if you see a lot of us OGs with the, the higher numbers, you want to know why? Because back then we really networked and we really supported each other with everything. No matter what. I'm not here on my own. People supported me to the fullest. And that's something I just don't really see today on YouTube. Nowhere, on no platform, on, on, I mean, on no, um, in no community. They don't support like we used to support. They don't. I'm here to tell you, I'll be watching. They don't support one another. It's Everybody turned it into some kind of competition. It's a competition of who can get where first, who can get the most first, and the, the crazy part to me is nobody's winning because nobody you don't even understand the part about you're not it's like relay racing all those relay racers passing the baton all the whole team wins not just the one girl or the guy that passed the finish line he couldn't have passed the finish line if the girl that started out first running didn't get that lead the guy at the end he just he just collected the winnings for the whole team that's all but the whole team was that engine and that's how it worked and everybody keep thinking it's some magical kind of way to get to that point it's not it's networking and teamwork if you don't do that good luck you know that is truly truly why I support so many people because I want to see everybody win. I know that sound crazy, all right? I know that sound crazy. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, we got one, got one, got him. Hey, how you doing? All right, how you doing? Uncle okay, Ed? good to see you. <laughs> Boy, your tents keep getting better and better. Uh, no, this this the old one, this the old, <laughs> this, this old thing, oh dear, this, <laughs> this old thing. <laughs> wow. So, how you doing? Uh, I'm working it, but I'm all right. <laughs> I don't see you in the truck. That's because I've been out at the farm, so I had to like do some things over there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Good yeah. to see you. I, I keep watching all your shorts, and again, supporting <laughs> them. Thumbs up, be me. You know. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. No worries. I hope to see you at camp. I, you know, I am so looking forward. I'm well, waiting to see how things are going. I, I, I know, I know. I want to come. I want to meet up, and um, it just everything seems so exciting. And I but know. I got to tell you that tent you just showed there. How does it compare with the the blow up tent? No comparison. Because that was off the chain. <laughs> no, again, that's what that's what spiraled me down into really trying to promote my sister because she showed me something that the little pieces of videos that she got mm -hmm. of me tripping on her tent. Trust mm -hmm. me, I was in her tent the longest. I was the first one to step in and I was the last to leave out because I was blown away. As a matter of fact, on the drive home, we talked about her tent. That that's what kept me woke. Wow. If you can find that tent, let me tell you this, just to, to straighten it out. If I had it all to do over again between purchasing her blow up tent or my Kodiak, mm -hmm. when I had it, it is zero questions about what I would have done. I would have bought that blow up tent, even if it was $500 more than that Kodiak. And wow. it's not it's the same price, yep. same price wow that's yeah. amazing but yeah. i won't hold you up here i just okay. want to here and say hey and um let you know i really enjoy uh, you showing the tents and yeah thank the you thank solar you. systems and and all kind of good gardening stuff so thank you yes and and, and stand 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 by let me take that away don't say that 
get ready, <laughs> you know. Ugh. Get ready because I don't know if I'm starting this. I may start a fall garden if I can, because the way things is changing now, mm-hmm. we're gonna start a fall garden out at Freedom Acres, and I'm gonna be doing it in my tubs so okay. that way I can. Got to okay. get that garden going, and things that's happening now with all the mess going on in the grocery store. What I did the other day. Oh yes. Don't get me started. See, okay. I saw that. And I was like, God, I didn't want to do a fall garden. I was going to wait till spring. This mm-hmm. is making it like, you better get that, that garden going whether you want to or not. So Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. up here, it's that time of year. Everybody is like, um, let me pick up some buckets. Let me pick up all that stuff. Right. Stuff right. that we're used to seeing. Yeah. Happen to it. Mm-hmm. I know. You right. Yep. You right. But well, thank you for coming through, my sister. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Toya's pantry, y'all. Any questions before I get out of here? I've been on here for an hour and 40 minutes. I can't believe it. I'm blaming this on Billy and Erica. I'm blaming it on my fly family. I'm blaming it on them. Cause see, I, I said, I'm hurry up and get out of here. It's they fought. This is them now. This is them, not me. This is not my, my fault. Let me see. Uh, River Birch. Oh, my God. A, a gallon of oil is $8. I was in shock. <clears throat> Let me tell you. There are going. Yeah, Erica. Go on, laugh it up. It's, it's y'all fault. This ain't on me this time. I'm going to tell y'all right now. The reason I'm really showing these tents and we're having fun, but I don't want nobody to lose sight of why we're doing it. Because if stuff keep going like this, <clears throat> this, this is, I'm going to do another video later. I, I can't do it right now, but later, I promise you, I promise you, we got a deep talk that we got to talk. Uh, Fred says, I work at the store. And the price of vinegar went up $3. I showed y'all how to make vinegar. That's why I keep putting making those. My video to pop up at the end of my video. That vinegar is better, almost as good as bleach. If you distill your vinegar, even better. Trust and believe it. That stuff will save your life. Make your own vinegar. Um, here go my man right here. Fat guy with guns. Please go support my brother. Zach, fat guy with guns on his channel. Matter of fact, what time is it? Oh, I'm about to come over there. Uh, Led, what's a good affordable solar panel I can use with my EcoFlow Max? Oh, you said with my EcoFlow Max, huh? Meaning, <laughs> I'm not a scholar or an English teacher or nothing, but that sounds, if I read it correctly, like you have purchased the EcoFlow Max, my brother. <laughs> you gonna have to call me. We need to. You need to call me. All right, call me, man. I ain't even playing, cause I'm I'm about to hook. I'm about to hook you up. And, and it's some stuff I can't even say right here, right now, cause you know. I tell you, call me, text me, something. I got you. I got you faded. <laughs> My man got the dog. Let me tell y'all something. Let me, see, y'all gonna keep me in here, cause I got so much to say. I got so much to say. If y'all ain't got, and it's something that I can't say on this channel, but I'm going to go say it on lead tech. So y'all better keep your ears peeled. So I can't say it here. I, I got to do this accordingly. Accordingly. Um, sm- Hey, smile, smiles. There she goes. She said rolling blackouts and food is getting scarce. And you know what? I promise you, everybody think that I was doing a scare, a scare tactic when I went into the store the other day. I think the only person I scared was myself because I was blown away. Like, here we go again. That was one of those moments of I hate being right. You know what I'm saying? I hate being right. That part was I did not want to be right because I still have to buy this stuff. 
these rolling blackouts and these prices is going crazy and going through the roof. And if anybody in here talking about some no, they ain't, no, they ain't, tell me where you live at so I can come come shopping. Please, please. And I am going to um I'm gonna tell everybody about me and me and Princess Leia's conversation too. Uh let me see. Uh oh. So y'all gonna mess around and see the house lights flicker, Lady Led. You you see it behind. Look, oh she she in the bed. I, I see her. I see my bedroom light on. Don't even get me started. Y'all about to give me a whooping. Uh, say Led Farmer, do you sell the gazelle tent? Do I sell it? What do you, what do you mean by do I sell it? Oh, am I affiliated? No, I don't sell anything. I don't sell none of the products that I present. I just present them. I don't sell anything. I show you things that I like that a company has offered me. If I don't like it, you won't see it. Trust and believe that. So, but I don't, I'm not a salesperson at all. The only thing I, you may see me sell is some of my cuttings, but as far as products, no. Yeah, you know Smile Smiles is ready. With the great space coaster, boy. That's her Back to the Future van. Let me see. Uh, DJC says, West Georgia Kroger entire entire meat department was empty midday shelves, cold, not broken. You want to hear something crazy? And I don't want to start no stuff. <clears throat> not the day that I, I showed you the bleach and stuff. But I want to say maybe, maybe three or four days before that, the whole meat section and the produce section was closed, roped off. You couldn't go into it. And I thought it was because it was maintenance going on or I didn't know what the hell was going on. You didn't see no workers. You didn't see no equipment. It was just roped off. Anybody here in Columbia, South Carolina know good and well the the Walmarts around this area was roped off. I don't know why. Because think about think about it. Why would you rope off the produce section? They had the produce in, in most Walmarts, the produce section wraps around and leads you right to the meat department, right? Where these two Walmarts I was at. It stopped when you come through the door. There's the produce. You couldn't go to the produce. It was it was roped off all the way around to the meat department and the dairy department all roped off. All you could get was, I guess, like, you know, clothes and stuff. I take that back, like canned foods and junk, Debbie cakes and stuff. But that's it. So people going to find out they keep thinking I'm, they keep thinking I'm doing scare tactics. Um. Guess what? I, I admit it. I am. But here's the thing. You can call them scare tactics all you want to, but the only people that are actually scared are the people that's not ready. I said this in my comment section. I said this in my comment section to a, a, another person, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. <clears throat> uh they said something about their friends or family or something like that. They don't believe nothing is happening. They think that we're crazy, right? I'm going to tell you this. They can think what they want to, but somebody, they were frustrated because their family members did not want to help them at all. Her husband or children, nobody wanted to have nothing to do with the prepping, nothing, supplies, nothing. I will say this. I found a way where I'm not as frustrated with people like that, that don't believe something is going on. When people don't believe something is going on, this, this is how I, I fight that frustration. I just say this to myself. Those are people that's not ready for absolutely anything. It's that simple. I know people going to hate me saying it, but it's the truth. You don't believe because you don't want to believe. You some people, some people handle this kind of adversity by just acting like it's not happening. 
And I had to think about that. You know, I had to think about that. This is how people handle things. They don't want to handle it head on. They don't want to take control of a situation. They don't want that kind of worry. One of the problems they don't want to worry about is because they look at it like this. I got enough problems on my plate already. The rent is due. Light bill is late. We ain't got that much food in the house. Baby needs some diapers. They already got enough. My boss is yelling at me. They got enough stuff in their head. And then when you tell them <clears throat> something is crazy happening, they just don't, they can't fit another thing on their plate of ridiculous madness. That's why. Those are the people that block out truth because they can't handle any more truth. The truth is choking them out already. Late on the rent, boss is yelling at them. You might lose your job. Today you've been told at work, if you miss one more day, we're going to have to let you go. And they don't need to come home and hear their wife or their husband like, I think it's a, a, a tornado coming. They just don't. They just up to here with catastrophes and madness. They don't want any more. And I get it. Those are the people that's just scared to handle any more truth or literally physically, mentally cannot handle any more truth. I get it. So with that being said, I say this. That's where whether you are the 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 wife or the husband and sometimes even one of the children, that is when you have to pick up your leadership role and you cannot let your husband perish or let your mother perish or your your children perish or your wife perish because they aren't as in tune to this as you are you got to look at it i look at it as a gift i look at, at it as a gift i can see it i feel it i know it's about to happen just like i look at people like get away from him he ain't right it's a gift it's like a sixth cent if you feel it Everybody does not have that gift. Everybody is not as in tuned as you. So don't take frustration to it when your husband won't join you with prepping or your wife won't join you with prepping. Look at it as like Superman. You got a superpower. They don't got that. So you got to keep on trying to save the world with your superpowers. So it's your job to take that leadership role and keep on prepping. Making sure your family is right. That's how I look at it. That's how I fight my frustrations. That's how I do it. Okay. Um, let me see. You know, again, people saying like, you know, <clears throat> listen to discernment and stuff like that very true but at the same time we li we live in a world right now that's so crazy it's so jacked up let be honest even myself that's how i learn how to understand where people is coming from they don't want to deal with this they don't want to deal with the reality of this because i was that person not not about my prepping not about my prepping and staying ready it was about the workforce. I just couldn't handle anything else while I'm working for another man and doing all this stuff all day away from my family. And that's part of the conversation that we are going to have. I think I'm going to come back on here late tonight. About 11. I'm going to come back live tonight about 11 o'clock. If not, I'm going to come back in the morning because I need to get this off my chest. Me and Princess Led's conversation was so deep. You know, it's my 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 baby girl is a she's a whole woman now, you know, so it's still hard for me to talk to her without wanting to pinch her little cheeks and say, oh, daddy, love you, baby. It's hard for me to realize that my baby girl is a woman, is a lady. 
She has a life of her own. So when we do have an adult conversation about reality and life and how it goes, it hit me right here. Because it's like now that she just ain't my little rockabye baby no more. I can't I can't slay all the dragons for her no more. You understand as a father, I, I can't. I can't put the night light in the wall for her anymore or stand there and let her come home, come sleep with dad. I can't do that no more. I can't protect her from everything. She has to learn how to do it on her own. The only difference between her growing up now and me growing up in the whole different era is things was bad when I was growing up. They, 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 you know, let's all let's all admit it. It's always been bad, but it really dog on it, dang on it. It ain't never been this damn bad. I, I, when I say that, I'm talking about economically. This not just feels like, but looks like. I mean, not just looks like, but feels like that. I hate saying this stuff, like they trying to get rid of us. Because nothing makes any sense. I was watching the news last night and I saw that some congresswoman went to a theater and was vaping and made a whole ass out of herself. This is supposed to be one of the representatives of our country, not of your school. Not of the high school, not of the, the junior high play, not the director of the baseball team. This is supposed, this is supposed to be the, some of the highest representation for our entire country. This person is representing all of us. And you go to a musical acting like a little kid, but it's easy for you to say, I'm sorry, and everything is okay. You still get a job where you're making 300000 a year and you don't get no smack on the wrist. You don't get escorted by the police. Nothing. You try to tell me something is okay about that? That just shows me that they have said it up where, yeah, some people, they are making better than other people. Some people are catered to. Some people go to prison where some people get let off with a warning. So if none of this stuff bothers you, I don't know what will. So I'm coming down to the conclusion. I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're going to just we're going to just go on with it on another channel. I mean, on another video, but I'm going to start it. There, there is a brother that I listen to every now and then, you know, we got two whole separate channels, but, you know, I respect some of the stuff he say, you know, <clears throat> and he always says this much m mad respect when he say this. He say we have to come out of her. He's quoting scripture in the Bible. And. You know, I've been hearing this all my whole life, but I'm really, really starting to get it. And he drives it home to you. Every video he does, he says it. Every video. And it's I'm like, what's why this dude always saying this, right? But now it's just really, truly, sometimes it takes years for certain things to sink into your head. And it's sinking in my head that I get it. Man, living, living so close to these people, which I was telling the guy earlier about living with the neighbors and stuff, living in these cities so close together like this can only lead to a catastrophe. I had somebody ask me earlier about, um, they said they have no money 
They have no income. They're living check to check. How do they prepare? And I understand sometimes those are trigger questions asked by a, a robot to trigger me and try to put me in a bind or something. So somebody else can retaliate on my answer. I am going to say this. And this, this really goes for everybody. Right now, if you live in paycheck to paycheck and you barely getting by, I know one thing about all of us humans. I do know one thing about all of us. I don't even got to know you, never seen you before. I know one thing, though. We all got a bad habit. We all got a vice. We all got something where no matter how low your money go, you have to have that. I don't care how bad it is. It's always some money that can be saved off of a pinch of one of your bad habits. True story. And everybody look at other people that have prepared and gotten things and got out of the cities or bought a piece of land or something. They just think that money just magically came to them from the heavens. You have to stop. And you have to sacrifice. And don't nobody understand what that means anymore. Nobody understands what sacrifice means. Everybody wants to be comfortable. It's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Or you, you're going to fail. If you are trying to get out of the city, get you a piece of land, move forward, even get you a tent, it's something that got to stop. It's something. You might be used to buying Campbell soup. Now you got to buy Walmart's great value suit. Yes, it only saves you 47 cent, but that's 47 cent in your bank account. You got to start somewhere. You got to cut the fat. You got to. Nothing is going to just come to you. You got to sacrifice something. And usually it's you're sacrificing being comfortable. I guarantee you, you can't. It's hard to live in the South. Did you hear what I said? It's hard to live in the south without air conditioning if you missed it i said it's hard to live in the south without air conditioning i didn't say it's impossible it's not impossible people do it every day but some people feel that it is a necessity for this air condition to run all day and all freaking night long. And then when they get the power bill, they figure, like, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Cut that damn air conditioner off and go get you a $13 box fan. No, it's, yeah, you're going to be clammy. Yeah, you're going to be a little moist and humid in the house. But look at all the money that you saved at the end of the month just by running a box fan. Open the windows, put one box, $13 box fan in the front of the house window and one box fan in the in the back of the uh, house window and let that air circulate and vent through your whole house. Watch what happened. It's going to cool that sucker down. Not like that AC, but it's going to cool you down. It'll keep you alive, but ain't nobody will, willing to sacrifice being that uncomfortable to save thousands of dollars a month. Nobody want to use one of these walking through the house like, like this, like 12 o'clock and all is well, 12 o'clock and all is well. Don't nobody want to do this. You want to walk through the damn house and hit switches like you in a 6-4 Chevy Impala. Everybody walk through their houses like they hitting switches in a 6-4 Chevy Impala. It's convenient. You got to pee. You flip a switch, you got to go get you something neat, flip a switch. You ain't trying to make no doggone ham sandwich in the kitchen like this. People think the stuff that comes to some of the people they see here on YouTube and everywhere else just came to them. They don't realize the sacrifice that went into it. They don't realize the sacrifice. They don't realize the sacrifice me and my wife made. You People just see what we have now. And say, oh, they can talk because they got it. 
You don't know what we've been through. I listen, I'm gonna tell you this, and this from the bottom of my heart. I guarantee about 30% of y'all couldn't have been through what me and my wife been through when we was first coming up. You couldn't go, you couldn't do it. If I, you know, I told my babies some stories about why they probably got asthma, some of them. <laughs> because if you ain't hardly got no plumbing and you got, you, I don't even want to talk about this so horrible. I don't even want to talk about it. You couldn't do that. But it was either me get grimy in the trenches so I can buy some diapers and get by or go call the plumber and get this handled. Sometime, man, you got, here you go. I'm about to, I'm about to keep you all together real with me right now. I got a big, pretty big house. I got three, well, I had to, had to count them. I have three central air units in this house. Three. Three. Did you hear me? Three. I have our main unit down here that cools off the whole downstairs, AC and heating. I have one in my attic that heats the upstairs heating and cooling. And then I have a split unit that heats and cools the other whole wing of the house that we had remodeled and made it livable. Three. As soon as I had this split unit put in, the AC unit for downstairs went out. Okay. They wanted 3500 to put a whole new unit in and, and that was just a starter. Okay. It wasn't even the right tonnage to put on this. Stick with me. So I said, damn, baby, you know, I got I got to get the money up so we can get the, the AC fixed because it has to be replaced. It can't be fixed no more. It's old. So while I'm saving the money to fix the AC unit for downstairs, in the meantime, I put that 10,000 BTU air condition in the window. And then I ran a fan that blows the air condition and circulated it around the house downstairs. And on the hottest days, we was like, you know, it ain't too bad in here. It ain't like that big AC unit, but it ain't too bad in here. And once, once we noticed our electric bill dropped by hundreds. <laughs> That was two years ago. I have not repaired that thing yet. Imagine this. In two years, not running our downstairs central air unit, central or heat. We got a 10,000 BTU air condition in the window with two box fans that circulates the air around the house. The money that we have saved in two years I now have saved up enough money just from, from that to replace that whole AC unit and still have money in my pocket to do something completely different. That's how much money we were able to save by just not running the damn central air unit. Mind you, my upstairs central air unit still run and my split unit still run. This unit right here saved us thousands of dollars over the years so right before i sell this house literally right before i sell it i'm going to put a brand spanking new ac unit with brand new ducts and everything in there for the new owners of this home but people don't realize that type of sacrifice they rather be comfortable no it's not comfortable all the time when it's 110 degrees outside that little 10,000 BTU air conditioner is like oh lord please somebody get me out this damn window some days don't even run the window unit and just take your goofy ass up there with the split unit stay up there all day we we're spoiled as as humans we're spoiled we're spoiled to be comfortable all the time. That's our problem. 
But then we scream and shout about the things that we can't do because the man got his thumb on our throat. Nope. I ain't taking that away. The man keep his thumb on it. But you can, you don't even try to wiggle loose. Again, the man do keep his thumb on your throat. But you don't even try to wiggle. You don't even try to wiggle loud. You just be like, oh, let me say my prayers first because I know I'm heading to the upper room. You don't even try to break free. You let him keep his thumb on your throat. It's ways out of this ghetto shit. It's ways out of this. But don't nobody, don't nobody want to hear the truth on how to get out of it. If I put up all the pictures and the little bit of video footage, because I couldn't afford no video camera. It was my father's video camera. If I put up the little bit of footage of me and Lady Led back in the day, you wouldn't believe none of it. You only heard me say a little bit of the gangster stuff. You ain't never seen the real stuff. You ain't seen it. You ain't seen Lady Led. I ain't even going to speak on it. She, she's a professional now. <laughs> okay? Y'all don't know where we was, man. It took sacrifice to come up out of that crap because nobody was letting us. Listen, the welfare system, they loved us being on the welfare system. They never wanted us to leave. We could have still been on welfare to this day. As long as that system exists and they can control your every move, that's what they want to do. And they tried. If I went out and got a job, all oh, your food stamps just went down. What? Well, we was depending on the food stamps. Yeah, but you got a job. I got a job to to supplement what y'all was doing so we can at least get up. They don't want you to move forward. See, they want you to stay right here. And you inevitably, inevitably make a decision to say, well, if I'm only making five dollars an hour at the restaurant but i'm making all of this on food stamps why do i gotta go do this i quit that and just come and get food stamps he got his thumb right back on your throat where he wanted if it was a real system that was built to actually help people they would be like this they would actually give you incentives for getting a job and trying to supplement what they're giving you so you can Get out of your situation and hire yourself. They don't. They don't want that. They find out you make a little bit of extra money because you actually trying to be an upstanding citizen, tax paying citizen, and you get a little bit of a job, make a little money, so you can say, "Now I can start looking for an apartment." Nope, they cut them food stamps. You don't even know how they found out you got a job. They did though. Cut them food stamps cut all them supplies that they was giving you cut off your wick cut off everything now then you get ridiculed by other people saying you just on the system y'all just trying to stay on the system and take taxpayers dollars but they don't those are people that's never been in the system and know it's a trap why you think we call it the trap it's a trap it's a trap and here's the worst part family it's not a it's not that kind of trap where as soon as they got you, 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 you got. No, it's slow and painful like a glue trap where you they can see you still caught in the glue, wiggling, screaming for your life. It's like a glue trap on a mouse. It ain't one of these. You know, once that thing hit that mouse head, it's over. It ain't, they don't like it like that. They want to see you wiggle. They want to see you squirm and they want to see you scream and they want to hear you beg for your life. They want to hear you beg them for help. It's a trap. It's a glue trap, though, that if you do not comply, it's a slow, painful, horrible death. The way this system is set up, they don't want you to get better. They don't want you to do better. They scream and shout that you need to be doing better, but they got the system set up where they don't want you to do better and it make them look like they're doing their job and you ain't doing your part. And then they got the rest of America thinking that people that's on the system, 
they're just lazy pieces of crap. I'm not saying everybody on the system is on the up and up because they truly ain't. I know that. Been there, done that. But here's the part about they don't tell people, they don't tell the rest of America in the media that everybody that's on the system ain't pieces of shit. Everybody that's on the system ain't lazy. Everybody that's on the system ain't just trying to get over. Everybody it's a lot of people that's caught up in that system. It's like a cycle. A lot of them people is caught up in it and they won't let them out. Because if, say, for instance, you own the system and somebody, God forbid, somebody pass away in your family and leave you a lump sum of money, the system will find out and they will tax you. They will tell you, oh, since you just got this $20,000 a lump sum of money is 20 grand. Oh, we just paid you uh X amount of money over the last six months. We want that back. Now imagine this is how the system works. If you don't pay them that six months worth of back pay back with interest, they can send you to jail. Now going to jail sends you into a whole nother spiral of bullshit. They send you with that crooked system to the same jail with murderers, abductors, abusers, thieves. They put you in the same jail with them. And when they let you out, see, it's universal. It don't matter if you went in there for stealing a pack of bubble gum. Once you come out, you're no better or no different than them, making it harder for you to merge back into the system, let alone climb your way out. Been there, done that. I'm here to tell you it is a way out. Me and my wife, we've been in that system. We was on it for years and people thought I was crazy when I was like, I, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not. That's them times where I told y'all Yes, my son, my firstborn son, I wrapped him up with a towel and put a grocery bag around him to catch the pee. And we just kept washing it out and changing it. Funny thing is, he didn't get no more rashes either. But we did that to save money. So we could get the hell out of here. That's just you gotta sacrifice. If you want to get out of this bull crap, you gotta, you gotta, it's some corners you gotta cut. Either you're gonna cut some corners or cut some throats. And, and you know you don't want to cut no throats because that, that's gonna come back and boomerang on you. You gotta cut some corners, cut some, cut some spending, cut some costs, stop the crap. It's it's literally that simple. I'm sorry for, for going on, y'all. But this is part of the conversation that me and my daughter had where it's, it's a trap, man. It's all a trap. And it's only one way out. It's one way out. And I know a lot of people say it's a whole bunch of combinations, but actually in reality, it's only one sure shot way out that's to literally like my friends say come out of her come away from these cities get away from this listen like I, I told my daughter when you're in the city like I am now right let's think about this when you're in the city y'all are with me you go to Walmart. Let's just say you go for a loaf of bread. No, let's say a gallon of milk. You go to Walmart for a gallon of milk. I picked the back of the store because it's a reason. All you wanted was a gallon of milk. You go into the store and you come out with a cart. Sometimes you go on your way to get the gallon of milk, you have to go back to the front of the store and grab a cart. You know why you got to grab a cart? Because you just picked up a bunch of, your arms is like this now. Just on the way to get the milk, you got an arm full of crap 
that you want. You got an arm full of bullshit that you want, that you just have to buy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. <laughs> you only got stuff that you wanted. You look like you about to get sick when you get the final total or the price with these three bags of crap that you just bought. There's only three bags, and it say $89.97. <laughs> What the hell did I buy some Colombian Bam Bam? <laughs> I bought some Tootsie Rolls, some milk, tissue paper, these pack of gel pens that was on sale, uh, a pumpkin. Uh, you start naming off shit so stupid. I do this all the time. You know how many times I'm, I'm listen, if y'all ever go in the grocery store and just see a pile of groceries just sitting there, it was probably me. I'm that dude to get to the register. $89.99? What the hell to do? Who did I just make a deal with? Noriega? No. Uh-uh. Where's Tony Montana in this? <laughs> right? Oh, no. We ain't paying that. And then you start looking at what's in your bag. You came in for a jug of milk. You got a... Why do you got a pumpkin? You bought a pumpkin in july why did you do that right you on a diet but you bought donuts you bought a set of wrenches you got wrenches at the house these is just in a color that you like you come out the store and bought a whole bunch of stuff that you wanted and nothing that you needed when you lived in the city everywhere you go around you is things that you want things that they advertise that you want look at all the commercials and advertisements there is nothing that you need on a commercial there is nothing on a commercial that you need there are only wants so when you in the city you constantly bring home a bunch of crap that you wanted you fulfilled your instant desires that's lightweight evil, right? You wanted to fulfill your inner cravings or desires, your instinct right now. It's in your face. Get it, get it, get it, get it. When you get away from the city, and I'm here to tell you, because this ain't my first rodeo. This ain't me and Lady Led first rodeo. We lived away from the city before. One thing about living out on land that you've purchased of on your own through your own sweat and tears. You ain't so quick to go and get a bunch of stuff that you want. Your necessities come first, and I'm going to tell you why. Because just driving around the corner to the Walmart or just driving down the block to go pick up a double cheeseburger is not a thing. Going into town to get things is a job. Nothing is just down the street. Nothing is just down the block. This is like the old days where the family took a trip to the city to go to market. It's no different now. And then what we was talking about on Vision Preparedness Channel, when you get to town where our land is, there is no Walmart, no Lowe's, Home Depot, all the, no, it's Bill and Earl's Waffles and Transmission Shop. <laughs> you want a loaf of bread? Um, go to Miss Betty's, Miss Betty's that pastry shop where she just baked this bread today. That's the kind of stuff you run into. Ain't no one-stop shop for everything. It is just not. So you have to be precise on what you're about to leave the house and do. Number one, I got to drive about 30, 40 miles before I even get to uh, Uncle Ray's chicken, waffles, and dentistry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got to drive 30, 40 miles before you see the first actual business, you know, Uncle Ray's chicken waffle and dentistry slash MD. <laughs> C 
slash pediatrician. You know. <laughs> but that's the stuff you see. And uh, so it takes thought. Every time you have to leave the land to go out to handle some business, trust and believe you don't bring back nothing you want. You only bring back necessities. And that when I'm on the land, I see how much money I save because you just everything ain't in your face. All your cravings, wants, and desires ain't shoved in your face. Look, while you scanning, you trying to scan your groceries and stuff, right? Boop, boop, boop. It's about it's about 40 snicker bars. You knock out. They did this on purpose. Y'all know I ain't lying. At the Walmart, they put the snicker bar so close to the scanner, the boop, boop, boop. You will knock three snicker bars into your cart by accident. You go to scanning it. Boop, three snicker bars. There. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and then they got it so ain't no cashiers. It's only one running about 14 registers, self-checkouts, that you don't even want to bother her. Plus, she might be lightweight and competent. She's not going to help. She's, so you, what do you say? Just F it. I just leave the three snicker bars in the cart. I'll buy them. Now you just bought three things that you don't need or nothing. When you in them cities and these big old stores, man, they put the food and the junk and the crap so close to you. You, you I done bought this how this how dumb they make us. Say you want a pop, right? Or soda, like some people call. It. Say you want a soda pop. You you didn't know you wanted a soda pop till you seen them ice cold ones sitting right there at your kneecap while you scanning your groceries, right? You're like, dang, I sure could use a cold pop. It is hot outside. Not water, pop. You so dumb and you so tricked that you reaching that little refrigerator down there by the cat, the little scanner, this one, because it's ice cold, is $3.89. But if you go all the way to the whole back of the store and grab you a two liter, it's a dollar and 25 cent. Uh, one, one, 175, buy two, get three free. I mean, buy one, get two free. Whatever. Buy two for $3. You said, mm, I'm not going all the way back there and save a whole two dollars i'm gonna buy this little bitty pop that i don't even need i really didn't want till i just happened to look at it and i'm gonna pay three times the price for it that's how dumb they got us that's how stupid dumbed down they got us you ain't gonna put this back either especially after you touch it and it's ice cold it's 106 outside and then it's the, the bottle starts sweating in your hand oh yeah boop Matter of fact, give me another one. I'm just going to say, I, I'll pay that extra three dollar boop because she's going to ask me for some when we get to the car. I ain't going to give her none of this. So I better get her one. Boop. You come out of there like you just made a deal with Tony Montana and all you went in for was a jug of milk. That's what the city do to you. The city have you walking through looking for that jug of milk and you came out with three T-shirts a pair of shoes, <laughs> some window washer fluid for your car, because you was like, I believe I'm low. You came out with a, a shop vac for some reason and a pumpkin. <laughs> and a pumpkin. You get to the car, she didn't want to go in because she know what she's going to do. She said, what you get a pumpkin for? I, I, don't, I don't know. Don't you like pumpkins? For what? Don't you eat pumpkin? No. You want to carve one? I'm not into that. Well, we just going to have it. And y'all will see me with a pumpkin sitting on my porch for no apparent MF and reason. Not for fall decorations. I don't celebrate Halloween. Nothing. It's just a pumpkin on my porch. Because I was so stupid and duped into buying it. I felt I got to make it work some kind of way. Put it on my porch. That pumpkin will sit on my porch till it melt in July stupid when you out there and you don't sacrifice you don't work your fingers to the bone to own your own piece of land it don't got to be 40 acres but it's yours once you out there away from these freaking cities you start seeing how much money you save 
your impulse shopping seem like that switch is turned off. That shit, that switch is turned off. Even if you're you happen to get to one of those kind of stores, you'll be surprised how not interested you are in that crap that's right at the register. True story. Uh, TLC said, Lair, what's with them pumpkins? I don't know. That, that, that's the that's my point of how stupid living in the city makes us. We do dumb stuff. We literally will buy a pumpkin. I don't eat pumpkins. I don't carve pumpkins. I don't want the seeds out the pumpkin. And, and the pumpkin going to bring mice. And squirrels going to start eating the pumpkins. You know what you're going to do once the mice and the squirrels start eating the pumpkins that you didn't want nor that you need? You're going to go to the back to the damn store to buy things to fight the mice and to fight the squirrels that's trying to eat the pumpkin that you did not want nor did you need. Money on top of money you throwing away. Say, baby, where you going? I'm about to run, uh, I'm about to run down to the Walmart real quick. For what? Oh, uh, yeah. You, you see them squirrels? Squirrels out there eating the pumpkin. They're about to eat my pumpkin up. So? <laughs> Lady Liz, <Lynn>, so? <laughs> well, I bought that damn pumpkin. I ain't going to let the squirrels eat my damn pumpkin. So I'm about to go get some glue traps and some poison to keep these mice and these squirrels off my damn pumpkin. See how dumb all of that just was? See? <laughs> you brought pests to your house for a pumpkin that you did not want nor did you need it was just there at the register and sometimes you will come up to the damn register and somebody already left something behind like damn somebody didn't want this damn this look pretty cool you be like oh oh we got a light on it oh i'm gonna buy this boop <laughs> you bought somebody else bullshit that they didn't even want that's how dumb down we are I'm about to run to the Walmart to get some pests, some supplies to get rid of pests to ward off the damn pests from the pumpkin that I did not want, nor did I need that I just spent all this money on. It's a big cycle of bullshittery. Right, Belinda. $400 later. We back in the store, Sweet Thumb say, exactly. We're back in the store to do it all over again. Then once you finally catch something in the glue trap, you don't want to touch it. Where are you going? I'm running down to the Walmart. For what? I got to go get some gloves so I can grab this pest that I caught in the trap to throw it away. In it. I rest my case. He keeps saying, my friend keeps saying, come out of these cities, man come away from these cities it's gonna be the only way like i told my daughter when every time the stuff pop off every time the stuff pop off and and oh it's a new something about to happen oh they want to give us another band-aid or or that was another mandate it's all all this stuff start happening again all over again right everything in the city goes haywire first and I'm going to tell you, then I drive all the way to the land. I get out there. Nobody knows anything is going on. Because they don't live this way. They don't know that people is, is trying to uh, uh, end each other's existence because they want to get the last roll of toilet paper. They don't even know this stuff is existing out there. They don't have a clue that we in the cities fighting like bloods and crips. They don't even know. They out in the country just enjoying life. And they already stocked up and supplied to the fullest. They could care less about the nonsense to go on in the city. And I'm going to bring this back up too. I'm going to say it. My daughter hit me with this. This is how I know my baby ain't a baby no more. My baby is a whole woman. My baby is a lady. My, my baby is a whole lady <clears throat> she'll always be my baby but it's hard for me to understand she's a woman now but 
when she say stuff like this, it let me know. I got to respect that part of her that she's a woman now. Uh, you know how you drive down one of these old little cities, little, little town. It ain't even a city. It's a little town with little buildings that's boarded up or, you know, mom and pop shops here and there. It's no real, it's no restaurants. It's no real rest, no chain restaurants. It's none of this stuff. But you see people thriving in these little tiny towns, right? You could drive through one side of the town to the other side of the town and doing 30 mile an hour in less than one minute. You will drive through one of those towns when you on your family vacation or something. You know what you will say? You will say, how do people live like this? God, they don't got nothing here. Don't lie and say you ain't never said it because I've even said it. Don't lie. You've said it. You drove through one of these little cities and you said this out of your mouth. If you didn't say it, you thought it. How do people live like this? You made this face too. Damn. Look at this gas station. Do they sell gas or crack? Ugh. I don't understand how they function. You've said it out your mouth. So me and my daughter, we driving through this little town. And I'm thinking since she's young, she going to say something like, how do people live like this? That's what I think my baby girl is going to say. See, I'm still got my, her in my mind as my baby. So she's going to say something childish like that. No, no. That's when the woman spoke. The woman spoke. She said, you know that some people. Some people would think that this is a crazy way to live. But you know what? I bet you people never even thought that some people like it like this because they don't want to have nothing to do with the crap that we live through in the city. Listen, when I tell you I almost cried because that game that she just spit let me know me being her father, I my my work that I've put in in all these years didn't go unheard. You know? She's speaking wisdom. And I said, what you mean by that? She said, the stuff, that's, that's why everybody is trying to move back out to the country. She said, look at us. We're trying to move back to the country. People trying to move back to the country because this is simple. There's not a lot of choices. There's not a lot of anything. Everything is this and what you need right now. It's not a lot of wants. She said, we've been driving through this little town and we haven't seen nobody that's overweight. Everybody is walking. We the only damn car on the road. Spitting wisdom from my young queen. She said, I don't think they've ever developed with big, tall buildings or, you know, the golden arches and the king and the tacos everywhere. She said, maybe because they probably petitioned against it. Like, we don't want that here. We don't want it. We like it like this. We don't want a bunch of street lights everywhere and, and power poles everywhere. We, we like it just like this. Calm, quiet, no booming systems, no racing down the roads, no, none of this. They don't got to deal with none of this. Drunk, people drunk coming from the club, they don't got to deal with none of that that we deal with no drunken drivers nothing while we're just driving through this little town we wanted the only cars on this road that was straight straight wisdom and game that came from my baby like she was spitting game to me what it was was sometimes your youth your offspring 
has to remind us, the elders, of our purpose. Once we raise them up, if we did it right, sometimes they're supposed to remind us of our duties and why we here. And that's what she did. That's what she did. That one little piece of doubt that you have in your mind about going to buy land and shipping and carting your whole family out into the middle of the woods and getting them away from all the cities and these crazy schools. You, Your family don't want to hear that. They don't want to have no part of being out there in the dirt and the red clay and the sand and the bushes and the trees and the gnats and the ticks. They don't want to have nothing to do with that. But they don't even realize you're doing them a favor by getting them away from this this trap and going back to things and making things simple simplicity like i told y'all about camp some of the tents were over the top and some of the gear and and equipment was over the top but it was the simplistic tents that really really rang out and made you take notice of how simple it is to accomplish the same stuff that Lev Farmer is doing on his campsite. Miss Trish can accomplish all of that same stuff in her camp. It's simple, pristine, economical, and functional. She can accomplish every damn thing that I can. She can cook like I can cook. She can sleep like I can sleep. She got sheltered like I got sheltered. She could not perform nothing no different than me. Mine just got a lot more buttons and gadgets and lights and bells and whistles to it. That's it. Sometimes we got to ask ourselves, do we need? I, I always tell people about that part. If you ever seen Bad Santa, if you've ever seen Bad Santa, fast forward all the way to the end where his friend is about the icing with that, you know, he about to lay him down. And he said, I just got one question for you. I understand you crooked, we criminals, we thieves. I deserve it. If you're gonna if you gonna offer me, I get it. I deserve it. But I got one question. What did you need with all this shit? <laughs> this is I'm quoting a movie, YouTube. Tell you got everything. You gonna you gonna offer me, but you got the money, you got the diamonds, you got the jewels, you got the girl, you got the car, you got everything. But you, it's still not enough. You still want to take my cut, too. What do you need with all of this shit? He said this before he thought he was about to go meet the father. What you, what you need with all this? And to this day, it's a question that we all ask ourselves. And when I'm out on Freedom Acres, it's so simple. You don't find yourself asking yourself that too often. You don't find yourself asking yourself that. Because you make do. Remember them words that our mother used to say? Our grandmother used to say? We don't even say that anymore. Though that phrase right there, we don't even say no more. We'll make do. We don't even hear that no more. You don't hear it on television. You don't hear it on the radio. You don't hear your elder say it. You don't hear your mama say it. You don't hear your daddy say it. You don't hear nobody say that anymore. We're just going to have to make do. You don't hear it no more. Everybody want everything and they want it now. They want it their way. If they ain't, they're going to complain about it. Go to the news about it. Talk about you. Talk about you on YouTube about it. No matter what. I'm sorry for holding y'all up. I'm going to talk more in depth on this subject, um, but I do want my daughter here so you can literally hear her take on it because I'm telling you, boy, it, it almost brought tears to my eyes because to see, see a young lady go from a baby to a girl to a young lady to a woman that's making power moves It don't got to be your own daughter. It'll still bring tears to your eyes, you know, to see that somebody, 
somebody wiggled out of that glue trap some kind of way. They said, look, I'm going to rip the whole hair off my body to get out of this glue trap. Yeah, I'm going to be bleeding. I'm going to be hurt. My whole body hair going to be missing, but I'm getting out of this trap. I might even leave a hand behind. I don't know. Part of my tail go snap off. I got to get out of this glue trap. And when you see somebody trying to wiggle out of that trap, man, reach your hand out and try to help them out. It's ways to get out of this system. But if you are not willing to sacrifice a few things to get out, some people love to smoke. Some people love to drink. Some people love to eat. Some people got all kind of vices that you're going to have to sacrifice and come up from under so you get the hell out of there. And if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your kids. Get them the hell out of there. They got us set up just to the point. I don't know. <clears throat> and I'm speaking on two cities that really three cities that I have lived in. I don't know of a project or a low income apartment um, complex. None in Atlanta. None in Toledo, Ohio. None in Columbia, South Carolina, and none in Florida. Those are places that I've lived. I don't know of any low-income apartment complexes that are made for you to succeed. If you know of any, I'm all ears. I am literally all ears if you can name one apartment complex that's low income that's set up for you to prevail to set up for you to excel to set up for you to come out of there smelling like a rose and getting off the system i don't know of not even one not one every last one of them is set up for you to stay right there in that glue trap of madness that is no place to be raising no kid at and you hoping and praying that your kid get old enough and they set out on their own and get out of this trap but you don't know the longer you stay in this trap they slowly get stuck in that glue right next to you they never leave either So let me stop that. I hope. Um, oh, it's raining. It is raining. Hmm. Any questions, y'all? I'm I'm sorry for rambling on, but um. I had I had doubts for a minute about moving out of the city because I got it good here. Think about it. Most people would not leave what I got going on here. I got a nice home. Got nice vehicles. I got a piece of land here. I live on a lake. My house is made out of brick. Y'all see, y'all heard of three little pigs. I've been living here a long time now. Why would I leave? Why would I leave this? I'm around the corner from every store imaginable. I could do a cartwheel and, and be at the hospital. I could do a backflip and end up in a restaurant. I can do a twirl and go get my car washed. I could do anything. But that's what this city is set up like. It's set up just like them project traps. It's set up for you to to stay in that lotus flower, to stay in there and be blinded by all your pleasures and desires. It's nothing around here that you really need. It's just a bunch of buildings full of stuff that you want. And you will never come out of the city if you keep wasting your money on bullshit. 
every time you leave home, how many people, show of hands, how many people are scared to leave home and go shopping? How many people are scared to leave home because you know you're about to spend over $100 no matter what you about to go do? You about to go spend 100 How many people scared to leave home? My hand is raised because me. I'll be patient zero. I am scared to leave home half the time. Because even when you don't want nothing, they force something on you. They force you to buy something. I promise you, family, I have my doubts. I purchased our land and I still had doubts. You're going to have doubts when you do it. Like, damn, do I leave all of this for that? But now that I've seen it in another light, it's no different from me getting off the doggone welfare system. Yeah, when we got off the welfare system, boy, that struggle was real. But we got off that welfare system. <clears throat> we got off that welfare system on our own accord, on our own steam, with the help of God. And here we are today. That struggle and that sacrifice paid off. And I think this is the equivalent of that. Weaning myself off of all of your pleasures and desires at your very fingertips. See, they have made the cities into an imaginary heaven. You get what I'm saying? Or hell if you want to go that route. Because what they try to do is play on your every wants and desires at your fingertips everywhere you go. If you want sex, there's a strip club. You want food, there's a restaurant. You want to spend money on a fast car, there you go. Everything physically desirable is at your fingertips even even if you don't have the money to buy it they make it so you can have it some kind of way you know <clears throat> you can't afford a forty-eight thousand dollar truck you know it i know it but when you sit down and you were just interested in seeing it, you was you just like the truck. So that salesman sat you down. I can get you in that truck. And you know, man, I just lost my job. I just was, I just was admiring the truck. You know, I I can't, I can't, I can't get that, you know. Well, sit down, sit down. Don't don't say nothing until I work some magic, you know. I, I work my little magic here. Um, how much you make a year? Man, I just told you I lost my job. No problem. He throw that paper out the window. Just let me go talk to my boss. Everybody know that. Just let me go talk to my boss. That dude to tell you, give me a second. Just let me go talk to my boss. Knowing you just lost your job. You have no income. You have no aspirations to have future income anytime soon. But he want to sell you a $48,000 pickup truck that you can't even afford. It. How much money you got down? Fool, I just told you. I just lost my job. I don't got nothing. Wait a minute. No problem. Let me go talk to my boss. You sitting there like now, nah, this is what this is what how that game play out. Think about it. You start saying to yourself, why he gone for 15 minutes and he drink you drinking this good Starbucks coffee he done brought you. You like shit, shit. If this if this sucker can get me in a, in this dog on Ford F250 duly, <laughs> if he can get me in this Ford F250. With no job, no down payment, and I ain't got to pay nothing for the next six months like he keep telling me. If he can give me the hell, yeah, I'm going to dry that boy off the lot. You sitting there and I made it up in your mind you because you know you ain't getting that Ford F-150, right? A Ford F-250 with the dually. You know you ain't getting it. So you done said it in your mind. If he can make work, work this miracle, damn right I'm going to drive it off the lot. He come back. Good news. <laughs> Good news. Uh, I need my pen. Um, let, let me see. Um, and uh, where did you used to work? 
Well, I used to work at the what's the name in them. Okay. The what's the name in them? How much did you make last year? Uh, I used to make X amount of money. Okay, X amount of money. Let me go show this to my boss. I'll be right back. He come back. Now when he come back, he got the papers that you need to sign and a set of keys, a brand new air freshener go on your mirror. I got the guys in the back washing it up, cleaning it up for you. Okay, they're going to clean it up for you. Check it all over. Make sure it's all good. You sitting there like, are you serious? Man, I told you I'll, I'll help you. He just helped you ruin your life. He just helped you ruin your life. You had it already made up. It's a mind game. You had it already made up in your head. And if he can work this miracle, then damn, yeah, I'm going to take it off the lot. He worked that miracle, but it wasn't a miracle. It was a curse. He wasn't an angel. He was a demon. He didn't. Well, since you don't got any money down, we're going to have to go with the higher interest rate. OK, and since you don't have any money down, this is going to be your monthly payment. You see how you show it to you fast. Just sign here, 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 here. While you're signing, he got stuff running through the doggone copy machine. He take that from you. You can sign that later. Just sign this here, 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 here. Next thing you know, an hour go past. You just came in here to look at this truck that you liked when you was driving down the road. Next thing you know, you got a set of keys in your hand. And you driving a brand new Ford F-250 with the dualies. And all you think to yourself is, what the hell just happened? Exactly. What the hell just happened? That's exactly what happened to you. Hell just happened. It just occurred. This is a trap. Everything around you, they can make it happen for you. They can, they can get you to do any. You can have any anything you desire. Does that sound holy to you? When you don't got money to pay off, to pay, you don't have nothing to give back, but they'll give you all the wants and desires that you have at your fingertips. Does that sound holy to you? That is a trap. That's demonic. We can make that work for you. Just sign here, 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 here. Got you. You don't see that out there in the country. You don't see that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I seen a, a Dodge Ram, four-door Dodge Ram. I said, ooh, because I'm thinking about getting trading in my Tahoe because I need a pickup truck. Ooh, okay. That's nice. I stopped, and a guy came out. Hey, you looking at that Dodge, huh? Yeah, that's a bad boy. That's a runner right there. You know, the old spiel. Remember, we out in the country in the middle of nowhere. That's a runner right there. I'm telling you, you want to take it for a ride? No, I'm just looking. Okay. That that right there is a runner. And you say this. Well, well, I said, sir, I am curious, though. How much you want for it? Give me 9000 cash. Did you hear what he said? Give me 9,000 cash. He did not say, come in my office. Let me go talk to my boss. Let's try to work something out. That man said, give me 9,000 cash, man. You drive off with it. I get a little something else. You leave your truck. That was actually the angel. Even though you like nine thousand dollars, what is this a two thousand two? And you smoking rocks? That's what you want to say. But that was the real angel that you're talking to, cause he ain't about to try to stiff you up. Give me nine cash, son. Not half. All my cash. Give me nine of them. 
I don't want to talk to you about no payment plan, layaway, credit, buy here, pay now, rent to own, none of that bullshit, man. Give me nine stacks. That was the real angel. The demon is the one to say, sign here, 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 and here. You don't even know what your first payment is until it come in the mail. Like, what? You don't know whether your first car note is a car note or a letter from the, the cartel. <laughs> like, we're, we're going to need the, uh, another shipment. Again. I really do love my house. I really do love my land here. But I'm waking up to realize I've been doing this whole thing wrong for the last 13 years. I've been doing it all wrong. We've all fallen into those traps of the desires, and we brag on it too. We brag on it, me and you. We do. We brag on it. We say, "Oh, boom, boom! Uh, it's a it's a golden arches around the corner. It's the Kang around here. It's some tacos over there. It's the movie theater right here. It's the this right there. It's the car wash right there. The mall is right there. We can go over here. We brag on how close everything is. As a matter of fact, even in real estate." That's part of the pitches that they give you. Oh, you're near schools. You're near shopping. You're near all of these other freaking people. That is actually a bonus to sell you stuff, right? The closer you are to other stuff and junk and desires, the more the prices for the home goes up, the more it's more sought after. They want to put you in this freaking cluster, you know? I, I got... I saw this development out in the country. And it's this big old... It was it was a big old empty lot. And I'm going to say it was about one acre because I was thinking to myself, that's about the size of our clearing. We our clearing is two acres. But I was like, that's a big old clearing right there. Right. I drove past this place a billion times. Do you know in less than 60 days? I can't make this up in less than 60 days. They turned that one acre. That clearing that y'all see me on on Freedom Acres, that's two acres. They took about one acre, half of that clearing that I live on, in this other lot, turned it into a whole subdivision and put about 30 houses on it. I saw them, I saw them running the plumbing. I saw them running the electrical. Every time I came by, I seen something next. Then I seen them running the slabs everywhere. Then I seen them making the roads and the streets that's supposed to go through this little subdivision. And then I start seeing houses being built. So far, I can see from the road about 20 or 30 homes this close together on about an acre of land. 20 or 30 homes like this close together next to each other. And I said to myself, damn, if you don't like your neighbor, you ain't going to have no choice. It, even though they might as well call these townhomes or condos because that's how close they are together. No backyard. None of them look like they got no backyard because the, the next house on the next street is sitting right there, right behind it. From the fit that many houses, nice size houses too, all on this I said, if y'all look at all of y'all cities, all of the new developments look like that. They don't give nobody no land no more. You will never buy a house unless you have it customized and specially built for you. They don't build no houses with no land. They give you a little backyard where you can go plant some roses or something. Or to go let your dog out to poop. They don't give you no, no, forget land. They'll barely give you a yard. And then they put your neighbors right here. I call it in your business. Literally. 
they build that neighbor house right here in your business because y'all so close. If you and your wife over here fussing, they know all about it. If you and your wife over here having a real nice night, if you dig what I'm saying, they know about it. In the morning, they're going to be telling you, hey, man, I, I'm sorry about last night. Uh, me and Jennifer, we, we wasn't listening, but we heard. <laughs> you know that. We wasn't listening, but we heard, y'all. Um, You know they got this pill. I got. I give you a card to my doctor. And they got this pill to help you with, you know, well, what happened last night. You know, you don't have to live that way. I got a. Here's my here's my doctor's card. You might want to talk to him. And you looking like how the hell you know? In your business, they built that house. In your business, that's how. Everybody in your damn business. And that goes for the person that was telling me about my, my neighbors and stuff like that. I just don't want this no more, man. Ain't nothing wrong with these folks. I just don't want, I don't want to come. Ain't nothing wrong with these folks. Half of them good people. I just don't want to come out my door. And the first thing I see before I see the birds chirping and the, the cranes and the ducks and the geese. The first thing I see is, is my neighbor's doing a fast walk or the neighbor picking up a pile of dog turds that I, that's just not what I want to come out sipping my coffee and see you know like first thing you open the door and the windows and see is your neighbors out here walking their dog and picking up dog turds and you turn, turn this way you come in the backyard you see him out here cutting his guy. that ain't what you want to see man when I wake up I don't want to see nobody I want to be able to come out my yard and witness God's creation. You know, I don't want to see nothing. I want to hear what he done. I don't want to see what you got going on, what you got going on. You picking up dog turds. You trying to lose 20 pounds, fast walking. You jogging with a, a newborn baby. I, for the life of me, I don't understand that bullshit either. Newborn baby, you already jogging, got him on one of them, them fast baby, baby trike things. Baby hit a rock and flick out of there. People dumb, man. It's nothing wrong with these people, like I said. Good people. I just don't want to come out my door every morning and see them, though. I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of neighbor. And I, I, they probably think I'm mean. They probably think I'm harsh because I don't talk to nobody. I, I don't. And it ain't that I'm being cruel. It's just, man, I, I don't want to see y'all. It's nothing against them either. I just want to come out and, 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 and hear God's whisper, you know, or let him speak to me and let, let me meditate, open my mind so I can get some kind of wisdom. Or what am I supposed to be doing today, Lord? You talk to God and ask him, what, what do you want me to do today, right? You can't hear God speak if you hear dogs barking. If you see a dude picking up dog turds and you trying to figure out, do he got a bag on his hand or no? Nah? I, I see him grabbing them turds. Is the bag that he picking them dog turds up, is it that clear that I can actually see his fingers? Or see how that it just distracted you? You can't talk to you can't talk to the father man with all these distractions. This dude cutting his leaves and, and picking up and, and, and chopping his lawnmower going on and leaf blowers and weed whackers you can't listen to the father like that out on the land on freedom acres man i come out that rv you hear nothing but god's work you don't hear no cars no lights 
No motor cars, not a single luxury. You hear creation. You hear creation when you come out on Freedom Makers. You step outside. You open the windows. Listen, hear that? I hear somebody car alarm going off right now. You don't be hearing that out there. You don't hear road rage. Somebody close by on one of these roads getting mad because somebody ain't going at the green light because they texting. Start honking their horn. You don't got to hear that out there. And I told my wife, I don't want to spend my last days on earth in so much damn confusion, so much noise. I don't want to spend my last, look, we all up in age. I don't want to spend my last days on earth, man, in the middle of all this noise. And you want to know something else? I know we've been on here a long time, but so what? Listen, do you, have you ever thought about when it, when is it, when is it time to be over? When is it, when is it going to be your turn to retire? People work so much now, you don't even think about that anymore. You don't even think about it. You just wake up every day and know that you got to take your ass to work. Every day. You don't even think about it no more. Do you ever think about when, when, when am I going to be able to stop doing this? When is this part going to be over? You know what I'm saying? You go to work every day. You spend all your whole time away from your family all day. The only thing you, the only time you get to give back to your family is the little bit of fumes, just like the gas in your tank. You give your family the fumes. You give your boss and your employer, you give them the whole tank of gas. You get home and you give your family the fumes. And we wonder what's happening to the family structure because the man, if the man is even in the house, the man can only give his wife and his kids the fumes just left over. How do how is it so easy for a man to go astray and end up with another woman on a job, what they call the work wife? You want to know how a man end up going astray and being with the woman at the job? I'm going to tell you how, because there's women out there that they don't they don't mind just get having the fumes. Because them women don't have anything. They don't have no man to come home to. So they like if all you can bring me is the fumes, I take it. <laughs> you know? And then the whole family structure is, is disrupted. Your wife at home might be upset or your husband, mind you, might come home and upset because all you bringing them home is the fumes. Right. It's all you got left in the tank. And they like, dang, this ain't how it used to be. It used to be so energetic. Yeah, when I ain't have to work um, 16 hours a day, every day. So that's how the world is. That's how the, the other woman end up taking your man. Because there's women out here that don't, and there's men out here that don't mind. All they, all they actually need is the fumes. They don't need the whole tank of gas. Just them fumes is good. In the family structure is ruined. That helps ruin the family structure. Imagine this. When I was a nurse, we had, this is the shift I worked on. We worked three days, three 12-hour days that gave you 36 hours, and they pushed it for 40 because you put in overtime, right? So that overtime gave you your 40-hour work week. I worked three 12s a week. Do the math. I worked three twelves a week for I don't know how many years. Three twelves a week. They gave you 36 hours, but the overtime that you put in on every one of those days went towards your 40 hours. Best schedule I ever had in my entire life. Why on God's green earth are we working seven days a week 12 and 16 hours a day. But then they want to complain about the kids is 
unruly. They turn into thugs and criminals. They in these streets. They getting pregnant. They doing all that. Because cause mama and daddy is in the factory every MF and day. The mama and daddy is in the factory all MF and day. Just trying to get by. Just trying to struggle. Just to keep us in this trap. Being close to our every wants, needs, and desires. It's a game. They got us bamboozled. They got us thinking that we need the golden arches. They got us thinking that we need the cane and the tacos. They got us thinking we need the, the, the swoosh. They think we need it. We grow up thinking we need it. So we stuck in them factories and these cubicles for 12 to 16 hours a day doing another man's work. Why your life is crumbling and falling apart because all you get to bring home to your family table is fumes. Whether it's the fumes of your energy, the fumes of your attention, the fumes of the food, cause you can't, you working that long, but you can't even put that much food on the table cause you barely paying for this house. All we're able to bring home from in the family structure is the fumes. That does not build a strong family unit. You can't build a strong family unit on fumes. That's temporary. That's the reserve tank. Remember, if you ever got a motorcycle, that's the reserve tank on a motorcycle. You, you, you can just flip that switch down to reserve, and that's going to get you another five miles. That's all you got to give your family. The rest of your fuel went towards your job, earning another man a million dollars so he can buy another yacht or another private plane that he don't need. It's one way to get out of this. It's one way. We keep wondering, how do we build the family structure back again? How do we get it where it's a single income family again, where mom can actually do what she want to do and stay home and take care of the children and, and just keep the house cool with dad put in that eight hour day and have enough money how did we go from that to this technology is better so they say how is it now that not only dad gotta go to work mom gotta go to work right the kids gotta go to work and still everybody is struggling and only bringing fumes to the table the child can only spend fumes in his schooling, in his education, because his whole tank of gas went to working and flipping pizzas and burgers. he been at work all night. He can't give none of his injury to the educational part of his life. That's why he half-assed getting by in school. It's one way to get out of this. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the proof of why it's one way to get out of this mess that they, they done got us in. We on a board game of madness. This is like that game Mousetrap. This is bullshit. Candyland. Listen to this. This is a guaranteed factual way of the only way to get out of what we got ourselves into right now. Purchasing your own land. I know a lot of people like, oh, I thought you was going to tell me something real. Yeah, yeah I thought you was going to say something significant. It is significant. And I got the proof why the only way to get out of this rat race is to get out of this city and go out and buy your own land. You want to know how I know? Out of all of the things that these millionaires and billionaires could be doing with their money. They could be flying in outer space for fun if they want to build me a rocket ship and shoot my ass off into Mars just for fun. They that's what kind of money they got. That ain't what they're doing. They could be buying anything. They could solve world hunger. They could rebuild Maui. That ain't what they're doing though. You know what they're doing? They're buying land. Land on top of land on top of land. All these millionaires, trillionaires, billionaires, out of all this money they got. You mean to tell me they buying all the farmers out? That don't even make no sense, do it? It do make sense. Because out of all, they done got all their most expensive cars and the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis. They starting to realize 
ain't no income coming back from that. And one thing about the millionaires, trillionaires, and billionaires, they're greedy. They're greedy. And that never goes away. So once they start to realize buying a Lamborghini, buying Ferraris, helicopters, private jets, there's no money that comes back after you make those kind of purchases. They always think in the mindset of whatever I purchase got to repay me. It has to pay me some kind of way. So they purchase all the land. And who owns all the land? Farmers own more of the land than anybody else. So if we purchase all the land from all of the farmers, we'll own that land and we can do whatever the hell we want with it. Because if we own the land, we own the food. If we own the land, we own where people live. We own the shelter. If we own the land, we own all the stores that people shop at. If we own the land, we control everything that people do from the moment they wake up to the minute they go to sleep. For them, it's going to always be a return for them for eternity. Think about it, for eternity. Because they'll never let go of them deeds to that land. So they're going to get a return for eternity, for their generations, generations, generations to come. Imagine this. So you mean to tell me if you're watching billionaires, trillionaires, and millionaires buying up all this land, you still think it's a stupid idea? If that's the number one thing on their list out of all the things that they could be doing with that money, money that we only dream of, they could be doing anything. That ain't what they care about no more. They want land. Because whoever controls the land controls the food. Whoever controls the food controls the money. Whoever controls the money and the food and the land controls you. They control us. Hmm? So. All the people that keep telling me it's stupid to go buy a piece of land. But, but the same people that tell me it's stupid to go out there and buy a piece of land is the same people that worship these millionaires and put them in their rap songs and stuff. Or oh, I'm going to be living out here like Gates. They put these millionaires, Rockefeller, they put all of these millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires, they put their names and they in their music. And to me, that's worship. That's worship. You chanting the names of men that are put here to destroy us. You put this in your number one hottest summer hit record. That chant is worship. So you're worshiping the same people that sat here to divide and conquer us. You think me buying land is stupid, but you make up a song and say you you going to be rich as Rockefeller. Backwards. I don't even make no damn sense. But them same people come in my chats and in my, my live streams to tell me how dumb it is to purchase land. See, I know who those people are. I know who you are. Those are the people that know I done figured your ass out. <laughs> I done figured y'all out. And now you panicking and you need to come into my live stream because I have a platform with something to say that makes some sense. Oh, we can't let him say this. We can't let him keep on telling folks this. Oh, my God. So we got to go in there and troll them. Buying land is stupid. It's the system. They just want you part of this. You want to be part of the man. Those are the people planted here to tell us that dumb shit. But at the same time, all the, I, I can say, upper class and financially important people, if you will, that's their only agenda. The reason why they're making that strange food, they're creating that strange food, is because they own all the land where they can build the labs and they can build those type of farms and they can build those type of things so they can be in there making strange food, right? They can invent all the food they want to because nobody, it can, nobody can stop them if they own all the land. 
they're trying to be smarter than the farmer. The farmer job was to raise the cattle, raise the crops and harvest the cattle, harvest the crops that took all year long to get your cattle big enough to harvest all year long to get your crops big enough to harvest. They they like we gonna buy the land from that farmer. We can do it better than him. You know what they say when they say we can do it better than the farmer? They say we can do it better than God. That's what they say. When they tell you I can make meat just like that. I can make corn just like that. I can make this paste taste like donuts. I can make this coffee taste like bacon. I can make this cookie taste like cheese. They saying I can do all that stuff better than God can do it. So I'm going to scoot him out the way. That's another that's another form of taking God's work out of our life. If you've been watching, I'm 50 years old and over 50 years in increments, I slowly see him remove God out of our lives in one way, form or another. And it's, it's always the excuse of it and uh, the justification of it is always opinionated. A reason why they want to take the word of God out of our lives. But look where that's got us so far. They've been taking it over my lifetime in small increments. Take it out of the school. Take it out of the church. Take it out of here. You can't say it here. You can't do it there. It's another form of uh, uh, censorship, right? It's another form of censorship, but that's form of censorship. When they start taking and removing the word of God out of our lives, we we feel no consequence of the father. We we lose that. We don't fear him anymore. If you take the word of God out of our everyday language and vocabulary, if you take that out and away from us, you no longer fear him because you don't know him anymore. Right. Imagine this. Imagine this. Bear with me. I know I'm rattling on, but bear with me. A lot of us have fathers that never was in the home, correct? A lot of us have fathers. A lot of us don't know our fathers. A lot of us have never seen them. We probably ran past them in the store one time. Some of us have seen our fathers. When our mama said, hey, you know that's your daddy over there, don't you? Right? So imagine you get a bad grade in school or imagine your daddy is in jail, been in jail all your life. So imagine. You get some bad grades in school, right? And your mama tell you, I'm tired of you. I can't put up with you no more. I can't deal with you. I'm going to tell your daddy. I'm going to tell your daddy. And you're going you gonna to see what he going to do. You're going to tell your father, see what he got to say about it. You ain't scared. You not scared of your father's punishment because you don't even know who this sucker is. You just heard stories about him. Think about it. If your father never been in your life, you just heard stories about him. You don't fear him. You ain't scared of him, especially if anything, you think he's a coward for never coming around and helping you through your life. That see what I just did. That is how they got us right now with Father God. They have taken him out of our lives to the point a lot of us have never seen him, have never met him, and we do not know him. So when it comes down to the point of consequence and repercussions of the holiest level, we don't fear God because we feel we don't know him. I ain't never, he ain't never done nothing for me. The system done stuff for me, your stepdaddy. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Your stepdaddy, the system, been there the whole time. That's my dad. He been there my whole life, the system. So you don't want to hear nothing God got to do for you. You don't fear his consequence. You don't fear his punishment. Because the system, your stepdaddy made sure that he don't want that part of your life at all. He don't want your real daddy part of your life. 
that's what this system has done to us. And when you take those increments of that consequence out of our life, look at it, look at us now. There is a murder, several murders on the news every single day. There's so many murders on the news. I hate to say this, but you damn near lose compassion after a while. You're numb, not compassion, but you're numb. You're numb. It's it's like, yeah, I don't I remember when when all them they kept doing this in all these schools so much for a minute. It's like which which shooting was that? Which school? I'm getting two or three of them mixed up. You did? I'm getting two or three of these shooting schools mixed up because two or three of them happening at a time every over the last couple of weeks. Then the police was police killing folks. You start to get confused. And all the names start to mix together because you're like, damn, this happening on so often on such a often. I don't even I don't even know how to feel no more. Even if you want to protest. They got it. So even if you want to protest against police brutality, you got to pick a protest. Do I go over here to Indiana or do I go to the one down in in uh, Florida or do I go to the, the one that happened over here up in um, Maine? They got us so bamboozled and confused, family. And y'all still trying to tell me it's not a good idea to get away from this bullshit. Because the more noise I hear around here, I can't concentrate on, on the Father's word. I can't concentrate. I can't meditate. All I can do is wake up and try to survive. There is no reason on the planet Earth any one of us need to be working any more than 40 hours a week. I don't give a damn. I don't give a crap. There should not be. Imagine this. You work every day, all these days a week. You work 12 hours a week. You wake 16 hours a week, whatever. I mean, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. The fumes that you got left for your family, half of that is sleep. I left that part out. You got to sleep. You got to sleep. So most of your time with your family is, is spent in dreamland, laying next to your spouse. Or you so tired you done fell asleep on the couch and she done throw that stinking ass uh, 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 <laughs> Dallas Cowboy blanket over. To... <laughs> she done throw that stinking ass Dallas Cowboy blanket over you to smell like your feet because she know waking you up ain't going to do you no good. Just leave you there in the chair. You so tired. There is no reason on the planet Earth that they should not make the work week, three days a week, 12 hours a day to give you your 40 hours. So you can spend that four days with your family, building your family structure, taking care of your children. Uh, let me tell you something about my schedule in the medical field. That three days a week, 12 hours a day, that gave me my 40 hours, three days a week, mind you, that gave me four days to take care of my children and spend time with my wife that means that's less burden on my wife because she don't gotta take my kids to school nor does she have to pick them up i done that on those four days i was off pick my kids up take them to school i don't gotta take nobody to daycare imagine how much money i just saved because two of them in in them years my baby boy needed day, pretty much still needed daycare, but my daughter shouldn't have been unsupervised. You know what I'm saying? So I would have had to leave her with somebody. So imagine how much money I would have, how much money I saved by not having to have any sort of daycare system because I was home putting down my own rule and sharing my own wisdom with my own children, not somebody else's ideal of what life should be like. I'm sharing mine. Those four days a week that I was able to do that 
made everything that I'm doing now possible. There is no reason on the planet Earth all of these jobs shouldn't work. Everybody, three 12-hour shifts. Y'all do, you, everybody, like, I ain't working on 12-hour shifts. You do it anyway. You call it overtime. Even if it's forced overtime, you do it anyway. Work that three 12 hour days and take your ass home. Tend to your family. That's the only way we're going to build this structure. Get away on those four days, too. On those four days, all that money that you saving, you ain't got to put your kids in daycare and stuff. Start saving that money for your land to get the hell away from here so you ain't got to work no more for no damn body. Everybody keep wondering how I pulled this off. YouTube ain't making it happen. People think YouTube dollars is so fat. It ain't. You got to come in this mug with a plan. The, the last part of my plan is to be on my land. I don't owe nobody nothing. I can praise the Lord from sun up to sundown. I don't got to do nothing for nobody. No more. And this is how it is. It's sacrifice. It's investments. Sacrifice. Investments. Sacrifice. Prayer. Investment. Sacrifice. Prayer. And I'm out of here, man. This, this system is set up for everybody to stay right where they are. Everybody to stay right there. You never, ever think. Have you ever thought every time you make a little, a couple of steps forward, they keep pulling me back in. Every time I'm out, they keep pulling me back in. Every time you make three steps ahead, Something happened. What's the name of them done got sick? They need help with the medical bill. What's the name of them car just got tore up? They're going to need the help buying a new car. What's the name of them? It's going to always be something. Such and such done got sick. Got to pay the emergency bill. Going to always be something, man, that drag you back into the shit. You know what I mean? And it that don't work well on the human psyche. It always makes you think, I'll never get out of this. And to the point you start just be like, oh, well, if you can't beat them, join them. What a horrible mindset to have. But the world got a way of just, it's that, what is it, that Chinese water torture. Remember they said like they had this torture in Vietnam where all they did was drop one drop of water on your forehead and the drop only hit you every good 30 seconds or so. But they just left you there. They didn't stab you nothing. They just let that drop of water drip on your forehead in pure darkness for 30 days. That drove a lot of men crazy. It don't sound horrible, do it? It sound harmless. It sound innocent. Like, how can a drop of water drive a man crazy? You strap a man to a chair... You let one drop of water touch his head every 30 seconds for 30 days in pure darkness. It ain't hard. It ain't hard at all. And that's what they got this system. This system is, is that drop every freaking 30 seconds. It's one thing extra. You turn on the news, somebody got shot. You turn on the news, somebody got kidnapped. You turn on the news, they trying to get rid of people from coming over to this side of the, of the fence. You turn on the news, it's always, it's negative. It's little, it's little bits, bite-sized negativity things you hear all day. But by the end of the day, by the time you lay your head on your pillow, your head is full of horror and negative. Why are you watching it all day? It ain't much. Such and such, the kid got hit by a bus. Such and such, lady got kidnapped. Such and such, they found the kid that was missing, but he wasn't alive. Da, 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 da. All day. All day. Then you got to deal with trolls on YouTube and people that don't like you on your platform, whatever. All that, all that, all that. You lay your head on the pillow and all those little things that really didn't bother you all day. Once you shut up and it's quiet in your bedroom, your head is on your pillow. It's like a toothache. 
because all of that evil, wicked stuff that you heard today is just pounding your head because you as a human being is trying to figure out all of this and figure out where do I fit in all of this bullshit? How did I get here? I was a good kid. I'm a good man. How am I here? You can either say, I've had enough and make a change, or you can have that if you can't beat them, join them and just give up. Just like the dude on the Matrix. He just wanted to taste steak again. He even said it. If you can't beat them, join them. And I think most of us as a society has that mindset. You can't beat the system, so be part of it. If you can't beat Agent Smith, be an Agent Smith. Nobody even care no more. Sorry for rattling on. I'm going to let y'all go. All right. Everybody. Uh, y'all have a nice night. And please just I know I rattled for a long time, but take a little bit of this. What I said into into your mind and just think on it. It's only one way out of this mess. One. To get away from these cities we gotta get away and spread out we are not supposed to be living like this 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 is a man-made situation we in now this is all man-made this is not god's work for us to be turn our head and have to look at another person this is not his work this is not his doing this it almost feel like everywhere you look is sin. Look about it. Why do you need why do you need 15 restaurants in two blocks? It's just because they trying to play on your desires. You know, why do you why do we need this junk? Just for the business to fail because it's 15 other taco places down the block just for these two businesses to fail. And then they leave an abandoned building in the middle of this dog waste. Well, I'll let y'all see a little bit of what goes through my head on a daily basis. Sorry, <laughs> everybody. Y'all have a wonderful night. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your family while you can. Think on what I said and just try to fix it. That's all we can do. Um, as you can see, these work. Ain't no bugs touch me or been around me all night. So the thermocell is the bomb. I'm going to put that in the description box below. Everybody. Have a wonderful night. Um, thanks for listening. All right. Guava.